All right, we'll just give it all a minute or two here to get everything going. Make sure everything comes up. Okay, there we go. All right, how's everybody doing this morning? Hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, we'll get started here. What we're going to be doing this week, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, we're, going, we're going to be foregoing the prayer request time because we have a lot of things to discuss on this uh, live stream. And uh, you say, well, I have an urgent prayer request or something. If you have one, then go to kingjamesvideoministries.org to the forums. There's prayer request things there that you can get the brethren to pray for you if you really need prayer. So that's going to be, uh, if you want to do prayer requests, then go over there. Um, just because of the thing here that today, we're not going to be doing that this morning. As far as uh, questions and answers, wait till after we do the study here this morning. We're going to be turning in our King James Bibles. Okay. Um, and we're, it isn't all just going to be about the book we're going to be actually going to the scriptures we want you to go to the scriptures that's what this whole thing is about and uh, at the end um anybody out there can have ask questions if you're a trinitarian you can ask questions be respectful and you're not going to get deleted or called out as a heretic or whatever else um just for asking a question not a problem we are definitely open open to people asking questions so and uh, if you're just going to come along and be a troll, our uh, moderators are going to get rid of you just like that. So don't waste anybody's time. OK, uh, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, I see uh, Trump MAGA here. This is what I'm talking about. OK, do we need another book? All right. This is a troll. All right. Um, I'd use your own channel. Making many books is not good. Yeah. So goodbye. See ya. Uh, you're gone. You know, it's what I'm talking about. Don't waste time. Okay. Don't waste anybody's time. Uh, I know it's it's fun to go and and troll things and whatever else, but you know, get a life. Okay. So um, we're going to be skipping prayer requests for this week, um, and we're going to be getting right into it. So, uh, just as a little bit of an intro, though, there, and then we're going to start here. So, um, okay. So, um, what we're going to talk about here is the book that Brother Jacob has been working on. If you want to go ahead and hold up like, your copy of it there, that's the very first one. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than this. Brother Jacob's going to talk about that. Um, but, you know, as far as we know, it's the only one of its kind out there that will be in print. Um, you know, it's not some new doctrine or whatever else that God showed to Brother Jacob or whatever else. This thing has been going on for a couple of years. The body of Christ has, has gone back and forth on this issue and debated different, you know, scriptures and whatever else with the Trinitarians, with the modalists. You know, it's 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 been out there for a while. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, most most Bible believing preachers of the past have tried to mix what the King James Bible teaches about God. They mix it with Trinitarian philosophy. OK, and that's the primary type of thing. So um, it's I think it's a really good book. Uh, my wife and I edited the book. We read through the whole thing and uh, a lot of good points were made. And. Um, and I think one of the big and important ones is the fact that the King James Bible is the only Bible that teaches the Godhead doctrine. And that's very important to get. So, um, you know, I just think that that's an interesting thing there. And today we're going to be talking about what is a person, body, soul, spirit. OK, but I'll let uh, uh, you can say some things about your book, Brother Jacob, some of the things that you're uh uh, thoughts as far as what you are having to change and of course where it's going to be available okay well i guess i'll, I'll just start off by answering again just um a little bit a little bit about the things the book itself here um and like brother brian said uh, a few things will look a little different um 
when you purchase it. Um, I did have to make a few adjustments to it, but very minor. But anyways, just to kind of explain just a few things and how how this book even came to be. Um, that's is the again. We'll start with the title. The title is "The Lord of Glory," and um, you know, just to kind of give a bit of a background, when I was starting to really study out the Godhead, you know, obviously I bought into the whole Trinitarian thing. You see the imagery and you and you think, okay, well that's what everyone believes, you know, quote unquote. So you you kind of go along with it, and it don't really make any kind of sense, and you're like, well, okay, you know, but you just kind of go along with it because that's what everyone else is doing, you know. And so you're led to believe and you're basically ostracized if you don't believe the Trinitarian way or even some of the other things out there. You're kind of you're just you're shunned. You're a heretic. You're this. You're not even a Christian um, type of thing. And so you go along with it. But then you, you continually read your King's Bible and you, and you go, well, hold on. What about this? What about this? And then you kind of think, well, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. And then it really just started to kind of like you said, several years ago when it really started just, you know, kind of you know was coming out like, no here's the truth of the scripture. Here's the truth of God's word. This is who the Lord really is. And, 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 and like Brian said, this isn't some new truth. Um, I show in the book, I give quotes from different brethren that are saying the same thing I am that are completely detached from us. They're, you know, they're completely detached from say Ruckman. They're off doing their own things. They're saying it. And even I'll even just say this, and I show the quotes in there. Um, there are even some uh, first century, church fathers and I, I don't put weight in the church fathers i just don't because they're, they're words of men but you know unlike a catholic they treat it like scripture um but i show the quotes in there where they're literally saying the same thing we are they complete the same thing we are and i and, and i throw those in there because of course trinitarian and we'll cover this later on but trinitarians they love to cover and say oh well such and such church father said this you know or something well okay well what about these guys you know if you go back far enough but the point I'm trying to say is, like you said, Brian was saying, um, this isn't anything new. This is just a collection of just what the Bible says, what other brethren have said. You know, not all this is my information. I mean, the, a lot of this, I again, I learned from you. I learned from other brethren that had, um, you know, that brought stuff. And then there's a lot of points that the Lord showed me. And one of the big things that the Lord had showed me was it, there was a study I did in my channel. I forget how long ago that was, but it was. I think it, about a year and a half, maybe approaching two years, probably maybe longer. I don't know. Um, but it was, it was entitled the glory of the Lord. And that was the study that really was just like, opened my eyes to like, Whoa, I've been reading all these different scriptures. And I never even noticed it before. And if you go check out that study, it's like two hours long, but it's, but I cover a lot of scriptures and, and that's where the inspiration of this title came from. Cause I'm like, cause that was the thing that really just, just opened my eyes to it. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and that, point is a definitely a big point it's like one of the biggest chapters in this book because there is a lot to cover on that uh particular topic which we, we, we can briefly get into later on um mm -hmm. but just to kind of go on to it again um just explain um the second um or the subtitle is is the definitive guide to who god is and i know that's a pretty um out there you know description i get that and i and i, and I did see some comments previously saying oh definitive you know and like brian said and this is not me this is not me being uh condescending or egotistical in any way um but the fact is there has never been a book in print like this and i stand by that 100 um if there is a book out there like that i would want people to show me because i i've never seen it um i mean but this book i mean it and like i said we'll cover it it's basically you really have three books in one is really what you get um and which the first three sections, one section, um, which we'll be kind of covering today a little bit, um, is what is a person. And I break that break that down much in depth. Again, no one has really ever actually done a satisfactory job of doing that. The closest one I've ever seen do it was Ruckman, but he kind of went off on a lot of different points at times. But yeah, his is kind of the closest. Let but, me just stop you right there for a minute, brother. And that's really the whole argument. If mm -hmm. you can write down, yep. you can leave it right there. Um, and and brother Jacob in his book really goes into it and he gets and he really does a good job and uh, Lord showed him some good things there because the Trinitarians will say three persons and the modalists will say we don't really they don't really understand what a person is <laughs> there's just two parts it's not three parts it's body and then soul and spirit are you know it's like kind of like I don't know how you do it like that still <laughs> <laughs> you know no soul and spirit are different and so he he does a really good job of that. Um, you know, I think, I think he really did a good job proving that. So, Thank you. 
But yeah, but that's that's the first part of it or the first mm -hmm. section. What's the next two sections? Well, then the next session the section, because then it then it transitions um, from that. OK, now you see the parallels. OK, of what I'm, I'm, and that's the key. If you can understand what a person is, you will understand the Lord so much better. And I didn't really think that at first, but when I started doing the book, you realize just how important it is. But then the second section then actually leads into um, who the Lord is. And I just go through numerous chapters. I cover all ends of the spectrum. And I start off real easy. You start with a basic foundation. Okay, there's, Bible says there's one God. I know that sounds, I know that's pretty basic, but we have to just remember this is what one God and this is what it means, you mm -hmm. know. And we can just continually build. And from there and there, we keep showing. And I just continually show all the scriptures. And believe me, and when I and when I say definitive as well, I mean, there is, and, I, and there's another bold claim, and I said this in the introduction of my book, there is more scripture in this book than most of any of these other books you're ever going to see. And like I said, that's not me being egotistical. That's just, no, there's, and Brian can testify, there is literally, I think, a scripture on every single page. So and everything I'm saying is backed up by scripture. Right. And that's the very important part there because people are saying, well, it's just your words. It's, it's just your words. Uh, how could your words be a definitive, you know, source of who God is or whatever else? Brother, could you, is, I don't know, is there some way you can turn up the volume on your microphone? Some people are saying it's a little bit quieter. You're a little quieter than me. How uh, does that sound, everyone? Say, it, say a couple of things again there. Is that any better? Checking one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, we'll see if it is in the comments. Um, you know, that's what point was I making? <laughs> oh, we're talking about a lot of scripture and the importance of it. Yeah. It's, it's not just Jacob's words. It's, it's scripture after scripture after scripture. I mean, he, there are literally pages. It's nothing but just scripture. <laughs> right. So, you know, to say, well, you know, I mean, people are already judging the book. They haven't even seen it yet, which, you know, yeah. it's, that's the way it is with people. But yeah. But, yeah. Oh well. And, but and, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. it's a cocky thing to say. Definitive guide to who God is. Um, another way of saying it would be it's a definitive guide according to the scriptures. You know. Right. And, and well, then it should be rewritten. Uh, then it should be written again and written again and written again. You know. It, no, it is what it is, and just read the book and and judge it after you've read the book. You know right. that that's the whole thing there. Right. Um. So, but anyways, continue, brother. Okay, yeah. So just again, like I said, the section two is mainly just about the Godhead, covering very, very meticulous detail. And like I said, it's not it, it is not my opinions, it is complete scripture. And and I say up front when it, when I get the thing is and I, I gotta say is too, because because I because I, I said this in one of my update videos, and people and I saw people were there going irate over this because I said the book is definitive, but then I but then I said I don't know everything about God, and they go, Oh, how can you call it definitive? Well, like I said. There is no other book like this out there. I'm sorry. You're just, there isn't, well, there's just no, there's just, just, there's just no book out there like it. You know, there just simply isn't. And, and that covers all that I do with all the scriptures and, and, and especially that people without, without leaving all the philosophical garbage out there. Cause that's where just, that, that's just where the problem starts right there is all the made up terms people keep using. But mm -hmm. um, the, the thing I have to say is too, look, the reality is, and I say this in the book, I have to, cause I say it's up front, you know? Yeah. It's, def it's a definitive guide. But that being said, if I were to know everything about the Lord, okay, number one, what does that make me? And then number two, then he's not worth a, a God worth worshiping. You know, if I could figure everything out about him, I mean, he, we're dealing with an om omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, om omnipotent God. You can't understand that, you know? So I can't sit there and tell you, I understand how how he's you know doing this 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 I I can't explain that to you, and I cover in the book I repeat it over and, and a lot a lot of points I do repeat just to emphasize look it's by faith just take the word as it says and I cover this all in the introduction as well I just got to say this because if you just you just if you take it as the word of God not as the words of men it will make sense and you have to just seriously just want to know and it's not that hard to figure out it's a lot of it's just all kind of like just right there Lord has to has to just show you mm -hmm. you know but. That's why I wrote the book. So it's a clearly, uh, clear and easy way to understand. But like right. I said, I cover all kinds of different points in there from just across the board that basically basically refutes anything that Trinitarianism or modalism or Arianism, um, you know, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, whatever. Just pick anything out there. 
from, it, from their writings too, not just yeah. well, I've heard that the Jehovah's Witnesses say this or the Catholics say that. No, from their writings. That's the other right. Thing and that and that and that leads into the third section. I there is a little crossover at a couple times in, in section two, but mainly section three of the book is then I actually deal with okay, I deal with the Trinity and modalism. Um, those are the two I picked because, like I said, a lot of the other stuff it is so easily refuted with section two of the book that it's it's just not even really worth it. But with Trinitarianism, um, I realize that is become that is like the status quo. And that is, and that is, if you don't fall in line, you're not a Christian. You're a heretic. You're this. You're that. You know. And it's just the, the most popular believed one out there. So I ha I cover the scriptures. And what's the things with that one? And I mean, I could have easily made this thing almost twice as big, going through refuting every single point every Trinitarian's ever made. Problem is, number one, there is just so much hypocrisy within Trinitarianism. There's so many different flavors of. Trinitarianism out there, and so that's number one. That's why I didn't cover all the every single point, everything out there. And this number two is the Bible says, just you know, by the words thou shalt be justified, and by the words thou shalt be condemned. The Bible talks about you know speaking lies and hypocrisy. Bible, you know, just different verses. So I just simply took their quotes, and I just okay, here they are. Here's what they say about their own doctrine, and then you're just gonna see them contradict themselves left and right. And I didn't just pick some Trinitarian off the street, you know, that you, no one's ever heard of. I mean, I picked, I specific, when I started the project, I, I literally just typed in, looked up best books on Trinity, top 10, top five on Trinity. And I kept seeing a lot of the same books reappear. And so those are the ones I got. And so I quote big, you know, big names, if you will. I, I refer to people like James White, John MacArthur, um, Walter Martin, um, you know, I mean, I quote all, just all kinds of different people. I quote different church, you know, church fathers, you know, like Augustine or Tertullian, or, um, then I quote other people, you know, like Martin Luther. I quote, you know, I'm, you know, this, you know, Silo Richardson, you know, A.W. Tozer, Doug Batchelor, you know, all the, a lot of these big names out there. I mean, I, I mean, there's so many more. I mean, I, I mean, I quote a lot of them and I made sure to cover the wide variety of different denominations out there too, because, uh -huh. you know, because they all believe you know, Trinitarian bit basically. So, okay. I need to kind of hit everyone. So you can see they're all saying the same thing. And like I said, when you pick up, when you, when you pick up a copy of the book, you're going to see just the hypocrisy is just insane. Just one minute, one minute Trinitarian says it's in the Bible. Then a bunch of them will say, then another, another side will say, no, it's not in the Bible, but you still have to believe it. You know, one minute says it's, it's too confusing. Next minute. It's not too confusing. It's just, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and that's the thing. And, and, and see, here's here's the I think one of the more important points and of this whole Trinity issue. And that is to be considered a legitimate preacher. You have to come out and say some kind of thing about mm -hmm. and the three persons and whatever else. That's why nobody else has covered this. And, and I believe that there are basically two different types of Trinitarians. I mean, there, you could, of course, you can make more, but whatever. The two different types of Trinitarians are those who actually believe it. And those who believe the Godhead and try to blend Trinitarian language in with what the Bible teaches about God. Right. And, you know, so that's the main thing. But today what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a Bible study on the similitude of God. Because that right there is the most simple way to debunk both modalism and Trinitarianism. Yep. Very easy. So we're going to actually go th through the Bible and... Um, I want you to pick up your King James Bible. If you have an NIV, it's not going to work. Okay. Um, you know, get a King James Bible. And uh, we're going to go through some scriptures here. And again, this is this is not fast food doctrine. Okay. This is not a quick little milk thing that, oh, I got it. It's just right there. Um, again, that's why Brother Jacob said the, the definitive guide, because he goes through a huge amount of information. You can't just come up to somebody and say, explain the Godhead doctrine in five minutes or less. No. <laughs> answering all no. the questions. You can't do it. No. If you want the most simple, quick, basic thing. Okay, I got it. I have more questions, but I get this one thing. It's the similitude of God. Because the, the modalists believe that the spirit and soul are one and body is, is another. There's only two parts to man. The Trinitarians, they say no body, soul, spirit, but then in God, there's essentially two spirits or three spirits, depending on who you talk to. 
<laughs> and each one is a different person. Yeah. Um, so, so God has more than one spirit. It's, it just gets really messed up. But we're going to go through this thing of the similitude of God. So get your King James Bibles out. And uh, we're going to start out here. Go ahead, brother. You can turn to the scriptures and we'll, we'll All right. go through some scriptures here, basic stuff. And um, we'll keep well, it very, very simple for the Trinitarians because I know they have a hard time with just simple, logical reasoning from the scripture. <laughs> well, um, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and start out with uh, James 3 9, the title of the, the video, The Similitude of God. We'll start there. Yep. So you, you want to give everyone a minute? Turn in your Bible to James chapter 3, verse 9. King James Bible. Again, book of James chapter 3, verse 9. Go ahead. All right. James 3, verse 9 says, There therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Now, just to kind of break that down, what's going on there? The verse is, it, it's, 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 it defines itself. Um, it starts off with, with God. And then the next, ver the next word is even. Okay, and this is I talk about this a lot in the book. Um, the word even means equal. And the way I and, and for, for a new believer out there, the way I like to think about this, how I like it, whenever you see you know the comma equal, for example, in my mind, I just okay, the first clause equal sign other clause. This equals that. So when it says God, even the father, it's referring to the father. And that's a, a big point I make in the book right up front. And you, this is a point you have to get this because this is where the, immediately where, where the Trinitarian problem comes in is when every time you see the word God, it's referring to the father every single time. And I show it in the book and I show, I mean, and, and Brian knows a lot of scriptures proven that that's an old new Testament. That's how it's defined. You can't get around it. And the reason why that's such a big point is because with Trinitarianism, for example, they make, in the, in the back of their minds, God is just like this umbrella term that really means, oh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or something. And the problem is that's not the case. So, so, that, so they can say, well, see, Jesus is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, you know, and, it's, and God is just this headship they give it. And that's not what the Bible says. So, so right off the bat, you got a major problem. And I have to, and I, like I said, I established that very thoroughly in the book. Mm -hmm. Can't duck it. But the point is with that verse is so we're talking about god the father so then so then it says okay semicolon continues and therewith curse we men comma which are made after the similitude of god now a similitude and we'll we'll, we'll cover some scriptures here in that in, in a second here but a similitude is a is a physical image a physical representation a physical um likeness you know it is it is a body and we will see that here um and so and go ahead and it's important to understand that it's not trying to say it's some kind of a new agey Kenneth Copeland thing. We are little God. Or something. No, no, we don't. We're not. We aren't God. That's not what the Bible teaches here. It's just we're made after his image. Right. Okay? Well, yeah, go ahead. And and, and so the point of, and the, the, that's point to get, though, is uh, understand that God, the father, he has a similitude. And so right off the and right off the bat, that destroys a whole lot of doctrine out there. Because again, if you understand Trinitarianism and modalism and, and other ones too, they get this, but those two especially, Trinitarianism, Trinitarianism and Modalism, and I talk about this in the book, they get into some thing what's known as a theophany or a Christophany. And the idea here is because, like we said, because they will they will make God out to be just spirit. So he so so when they say person, it's really just spirit. Okay. So which, well, like I said, we'll get we'll get that down later on. We'll figure we'll, we'll explain why that's that's wrong, but mm -hmm. that's what the, that's what they say. So therefore, they can then, they come along and say, "Oh, um, God does not have a physical body; He's just some invisible spirit." And so, all those times in the Old Testament when He did show up physically, you're not you you really weren't seeing that. That was just a veiled foreshadowing. Like I've heard all kinds of words like i've heard you know like, like a shadow he's a mirage i you know it's not really him or it's a future prophecy of, of what he of what he will be you know no no he has a similitude and so right off the but all, but also the other point is okay if you if you're a trinitarian and we're going to take the term person at face value you just read that god the father has a similitude a body therefore does that mean the other two persons of the trinity have on their own soul spirit or you buy soul spirit by soul spirit that you have to logically start thinking that if you take person at face value. So just put point, put it out there. But now I'm going to, we'll cover these scriptures here. I wrote, um, 
I wrote these verses down. There are 12 verses in the, in the, in the Bible that where the word similitude or similitudes show up and we'll, we'll cover some of these. I won't cover all of them, but uh, just for the sake of time. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and read them off here and then we'll, then we'll go back and cover a few of them. So uh, the first reference comes in numbers chapter 12, verse eight, then Deuteronomy chapter four, verse 12, verse 15 through 16, second Chronicles four, three Psalm 106, verse 20 Psalm 144, 12 Daniel 10, 16, Hosea 12, 10, Romans 5, 14, Hebrews 7, 15, and the last one being James 3, 9. But now, if you want a good definition um, that, that, that self-defines is back in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. That's where I think you kind of get the, the best definition of it, just by looking at the context clues. Yep. And um, that's, that's another thing, too. I, I, I talk about this in my book as well. You know, dictionaries are fine. That's good, you know. To an extent, but you have to your 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 Bible, and I prove it over time and time again. Your Bible is self defining. Mm -hmm. You know, very rarely are there are words where you have to go. I'm not sure what that means. You know, everything is defined. Yep, that's and you have to just use context context clues. Right, Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen tells you to study. To show yeah, that to God. The new versions change that too. So you know, new versions don't want you to study. But what was the pattern? New Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4, and we're looking at verses um, 15 and 16. Okay, Deuteronomy 4, verses 16. 15, 16. 15 and 16, excuse me. You're fine. Um, um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just start at verse 14 just to give context, just to get the context because it starts a new paragraph. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. They've already they've already going to go into the promised land now. But this is most speaking, and he said in verse 14, The Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land, whether ye go to possess it. Verse 15, Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. I cover that in the book. What's That's a specific event. I cover that in one of my chapters. Um, so, but, but and, and so in that particular case, they did not see a similitude, which, again, I cover that in the book, whole different chapter. But then verse 16 says, says this, uh, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make, make, and look at this now, make you a graven image, image, comma, similitude of any figure, comma, the likeness of male or female. And then it goes on to in verses 17, 18, and you, you know, says, you know, the, you know the, the likeness of this, the likeness of that, you know, talking about the graven images and the idols they're making. But do you notice the context? It, it says graven image, you know, image. And likeness that's very key and so what it's saying james, james 3 9 you know, may, you know men are made after similitude to god what's that referring to if you go back to genesis back in the beginning genesis chapter one if you've never seen this so you understand what's going on here genesis chapter one So Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and, and, and it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. There it is. That's similitude. And let, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and, all, and over all the earth, and, all, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God, that's the Father, we know this. And, God, and so God created man in, in his own image, and the, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That is the similitude of God. And like I said, I cover this in the book. You know, obviously he did not make a carbon copy of himself or something like, like, like say some, someone like a Kenneth Culpin would have you to believe, you know, that you're some little God now here, you know, or, and, and you, and you look just like him. No, no, no. But. Let me just say this real quick. I'm seeing stuff in the comments again, people wait till the end. If you weren't here at the very beginning, please wait till the end <laughs> questions for the end. Okay. But you know, yeah, I mean, again, we can get into the, all the stuff here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, and you can get into all this different stuff, but that's the purpose of writing a book because there's things that you just, in a live stream or, or whatever, in a conversation, things, you can't get into everything, you know. So that's why Brother Jacob wrote the book because mm -hmm. then see all the arguments refuted. But go ahead. But no, like I said, that there you go. That just shows. Okay, there you go. 
Adam, the first man, was created after the image, the image and likeness of God. That's what that means. Because if, mm-hmm. if you talk to so many different people out there, they and I cover this in the book too, but you see this, they try to get so philosophical with the word image. You know, an image, oh, it's just a, oh, I'm trying to think of how they say it. it. Just, you know, like, he's just a, the me, like, it, like, like they'll say he's some sort of like representation, but oh, it's not the body of God. It's just, it's just, you can see the father, at, but, but you can see him because they're equal because of the separate person that, that you can see and really, really weird stuff, you know, and that's not at all what's going on. You know, but the point is, the Lord has a similitude. I mean, he has a physical body. And you can see this in the Old Testament. Um, and like I said, I won't cover all of them. I'll go ahead. Next point, though, I want to make the point here that you did cover this verse 26 and 27 and the different views of it. Because some people say God was speaking to the angel. If yeah. God is one person, then who was he speaking to and, and all that other stuff? And, of course, the very simple answer is body, soul, spirit. Okay? They can speak to one another mm-hmm. all right, right. And, and again i show all the scripture in the book i explain i have chapters dedicated to what specifically is going on all answer with scripture not my opinion yeah scripture yeah it's, it's really easy and and again if you mm-hmm. if you say oh, i reject that okay then go with what you believe the trinity thing then there are three different persons up there three different beings each one claiming the title of one god that makes no <laughs> sense at all it's a it's a logical impossibility you know, I mean, it's it's constant. especially when there's scriptures that literally say that there are no there are no other gods beside me. <laughs> exactly. So, you know. But anyways, let's go on to the next scripture. Um, so then to get another example of the similitude, if you go back to the first reference is, is Numbers chapter 12, verse eight. This is the first time similitude is, is used. Numbers and um, 12, verse eight, you said. Yep. Numbers chapter 12, verse eight. This is. um. This is that story when um, uh, Moses he he had he had taken that e- that Ethiopian wife and then Aaron and uh, Miriam were trying to then then uh, use usurp uh, Moses' position. So then the Lord gets involved, and um, this is the first time it's, the word similitude is used. And um, so then this is the Lord speaking, and in verse um, verse eight he says, "With him will I speak mouth to mouth, mouth to mouth." Okay, he's got a mouth. That's a physical body. Uh, even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude of the Lord shall ye shall he behold. Wherefore, then we are wherefore, then we were uh, wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses. But the point is, you look at that, the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Now, if that's not a physical body, tell me out there, anyone, tell me what that is. You know, what I mean, that has to be a physical body. Uh-huh. You're physically seeing something. And, and now, of course, in the, in the book, I cover different scriptures of what they saw specifically um, across different chapters. But the point is, for the sake of the study, they're seeing a similitude. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty quite simple if you just compare the scriptures. And again, in the book, you know, just to make this point, um, we need to make this point over and over again to get it into right. experience heads. But it's not. Uh, well, I'm going to explain this by my thoughts and my reasoning in this this book and that philosophy. No, it's turn to this verse, turn to that verse, turn to that verse. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between a Bible-believing Christian like us here and a Catholic or a Baptist or whatever else. Yep. They'll refer to books of men. They'll say, you know, there's nothing wrong with books of men. It's fine. <laughs> but they'll refer but to that's all they do. <laughs> Jacob's book is just huge amounts of scripture, you know. So, mm-hmm. just I need to I need to put those little points in there. Uh, oh, sure. People no, say, amen. Opinions. That's just your opinions. No, it's not. It. He's he's. If no, you it's get not. See, go to this scripture. Look at this scripture. It ties it all in. Very simple. Yep. But yeah, right there again, you see it. The thing of the similitude of God. Right. And so we'll we'll hit a couple more. Um, we will. We'll, we'll go, now we'll go to Hosea chapter twelve. That's in the Minor Prophets, right after Daniel. So turn back to like the New Testament. The New if you don't know where the book of Hosea is at. Hosea, which chapter? Chapter 12. 12. Hosea chapter 12. And then, uh, 
So in Hosea chapter uh, chapter 12, verse 10, again, this is the Lord speaking. He said, he says this, I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So he's using similitudes and he used, and, and the thing is, the thing we have to get about the Lord is that the, in different times, he appears differently to different people. And uh, I cover this in the book. There are different times all throughout the Old Testament. He shows up differently, even after the resurrection of because you know Jesus Christ is God. He's the only true God. We'll cover that probably later on in the book as well to be clear on that. But um, you see after his resurrection, you see in the book of Mark, he was changing different um, similitudes. And so the Lord has the ability to do that. And and so over here in Hosea, that's what it's talking about. He uses different different uh, similitudes to to. Uh, you know, approach to men, how he wants to see men. And mm -hmm. and like I said, I cover different ones and they cover from different things, such as the angel of the Lord, you know, um, you know, the, the, um, the Passover angel, sometimes called the death angel. I don't really use that term, but people have called it that just, just so we're, we're clear. Um, you know, but you know, the glory of the Lord, I cover that in depth. Melchizedek, you know, the Mount of transfiguration. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All that, all that thing. Yeah, and, or even just the basic, how he came, the son, he sent the son in the likeness of, you know, corruptible flesh different similitude, which I cover again in depth in the book. But we'll just cover um, just one more quick one here. We go to Hebrews chapter 7. This is the book before James. Yep. Hebrews chapter 7. This is another reference to similitude. This is speaking directly of Melchizedek, who is Jesus Christ. I know, and which I cover this in the book. I show the quotes where everyone's like, we don't know who Melchizedek is. He, he's a he's a mystery. We, we don't know who he is. Oh, he might be Shem or, you know, he... Or, or no, he's the Holy Ghost, or is it Noah? You know, is, is it is it Enoch? I kid you not, people were saying this. Huh? I have it in the book, you know, um, which is insane. But no, it's Jesus. You just believe the Bible. <laughs> I, like I said, I, when I break it all down, it's not complicated at all, but people don't want they. I'll just say this. Melchizedek is one of the absolute just destroys anything else out there because there is, and that's because if you get the book, you'll see it. There's just you'll see why they have to say, well, we don't know who Melchizedek is because it just ruins everything these people stand for. But Melchizedek has qualities of the son and of the father uh, right there. Just yeah. one. Right. So, yeah, it's a problem. But if you look at Hebrews chapter seven, we'll just look at um, to get context. We'll look at verse 14 for as evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, our Lord, of which tribe Moses spake no, which, I'm sorry, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Let me stop right there. Our Lord. That's one singular Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are not three. There's not what there, whatever. There's just one Lord. Our Lord. Now, what's it say in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? You know, here is of the Lord your God is one. Right. You know, our Lord bring out of Judah. And what does the Bible say? Revelation 5 5. You no, know, he's the the lion tribe of Judah. So if you're wondering why I have a lion on the front of my book, that's what that is. I know some people were wondering what that is. I got I got to just cover that briefly. But that's what that is. I'm referring to a, a lion. He's, um, not drawing, he's not drawing a picture of what God looks like. Yeah, I I, I saw people trying to say this is my graven image of the Lord. No, folks, folks, if you're listening, that you're I'm just saying you're you're, you're getting desperate. I mean, that's, that's not what I'm, no, I don't visualize when I, when I pray in my bed at night, I don't say, Oh Lord, you know, you know and he, I see a lion when he, when he's called the, when he's called the lamb of God, he's not a lamb. When he's called the rock, he's not some boulder in heaven. You know, you get just, you know, I'm just using it as a symbolic thing. That's all that is. So mm -hmm. I, I had to say that, but, but and like I said, but that verse, in particular verse 14, I cover so many scriptures on that one. Just definite proof. No, it is referring to, you know, Jesus Christ there, who is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I mm -hmm. I show that. And again, and again, that's not teaching oneness. I refute, I have a whole thing I refute on oneness. So don't think that, oh, he's a modalist heretic. Just listen to the study, hear us out, read the book. You'll see it. I, believe, believe me, we're nowhere close to modalists. I show the quotes from real modalists. We're nowhere close. No. But um, but verse 15 says here and yet and yet is far more evident for for uh, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there arises another priest there's a similitude a physical body one of those things that like I said in Hosea 12 we talked about one of the similitude similitudes that the Lord used was Melchizedek and I grant you you don't really hear a whole lot of it in the Old Testament it's only mentioned like two times explicitly but they're both reference to Jesus Christ and you read it, and it's just—it's when you compare the scriptures, it's—it's it's very, very 
you easy to see. I mean, when, when Melchizedek shows, shows up to Abraham for the first time, what did he give him? Bread and wine. What does bread and wine sound like? If you know the Bible, he's talking about the communion. That's Jesus, the bread and wine. He offered himself. And you, John 6, you know, you know, I am that bread of life. You know, he, 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 he you know, eateth and drinketh me. You know, yeah. just so just those different points there. And like I said, we can go over all the other references to similitude, but it's not really necessary. Just you're going to get the same point, just a physical. That's just what it means. So the reason why that's so important now we've covered what similitude is because we'll just, uh, well, actually, Brian, if, if you have any additional points to make, go ahead. Um, well, it, it just, you know, I think it's such a good point that the Lord, you know, he appears differently throughout the Bible. But is there ever a time when he appears and he doesn't have a body, soul, and spirit? You know, I don't know of any time, you know. No. Uh, no. And, and so if man is made after the similitude of God, what do we have? We have a body, soul, spirit. So, yeah. you know, I mean, it, it, when you study this subject, it will inevitably draw you into deeper things. I mean, we're talking yeah. about deeper things right now. But go back to the simple. As I, I preached a sermon years ago. And that is, if you want to eat milk or meat, you need to have milk to wash it down. That's the way the scriptures is designed. When you're studying meat in the scriptures, there should always be that little milk thing there that's helping that pass into your system. But Which you, is what I, I said right, right, right that up front in the book. You have yeah. to get that. It's meaty, but you have to come back to that same basic point. Remember, God means the Father. This means this. This means that if you remember that, it'll be easy. Man is made after the smell of similitude of God. A person consists of a body, a soul, a spirit. There's no such thing if you're, oh, I, I don't, I'm just a body and a soul. I don't have a spirit. Well, then you're not a person. Just a <laughs> you know, right. It's simple. You can get into the deeper things, but you always have to go back to that simplicity there, that milk. Right. Continue. Um, so this is, so the importance of that, so, but now we've seen, okay, we know what, we know what a similitude is. We understand that God, the father has a body. So the importance of that is now. Um, is it okay? It's okay. How does this all work? And so, um, I think, I think the best point now is now, I guess, to define clearly what a man, you know, a person is, we'll just cover that brief, briefly here. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a bunch of different passages you can go to, but we can, we'll start off with, uh, I guess, first Thessalonians five. That's probably the clearest place to go to. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I, like I said, I cover a lot of this, um, the book, that whole first section in, in meticulous detail. Yep. I mean, in, in depth, you will see what a man is, you know, you know, you know and, and a woman. But I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. Um, First Thessalonians 5.23 says this, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, one, and your soul, two, and your body, three, be preserved blameless in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when man is made after the image and likeness of God, it's a body, soul, spirit. That's what you are. You are a... a uh, Tripart being a triad, you are three parts to you, and the Lord, what's He? He is one God with three parts: Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There's mm -hmm. a correlation there, and yet, and yet, and you'd be surprised. Um, well, not really surprised, but it's just amazing when you, because I show quotes in there. I will show that verse from other study Bibles and commentaries, and they're and they're all sitting there, go, all, they're all sitting there going, oh. Well, that's not by soul spirit. That that's not by soul spirit. It's just body and spirit, or it's just body. You know. And you're like, no, it's body, soul, and spirit. There's three things there. And of course, there's there's a lot of implicit reasons why they, they make that change, and I which I show in the book. But that's just one of the places that show that. Again, if you want to see another confirmation of this, is Genesis chapter two, verse uh, verse seven. Okay. When you, when you turn your Bible back to Genesis chapter two. This is when a uh, man is actually being created, and he breaks it down. Uh, the Lord and the Lord breaks it down how he did it. And again, I cover a lot of this in depth in the book. Um, yeah. And again, it's so simple. It's so simple. Body, soul, spirit. Can we count the three? <laughs> yeah. And they're all in your one body right in here. It's who you are. It's so simple. God is three, one person. You know, I mean, it's why, you know, you can get into all the deep stuff. Jake was, Jacob's book does that. I've preached on it a lot. And things you get into all the deep questions. What about this? What about that? But you just go back to the simple thing: three parts to one body. Over, it's done. Yep. Modalism is destroyed. Trinitarianism is destroyed. It's you know, but 
Genesis chapter 2 definitely shows this thing of body, soul, spirit again. shows the creation of it. Go ahead, brother. Yep. In Genesis 2, chapter yeah, yeah, chapter 2, verse 7 says, And the Lord God, you know, so again, the Father, we know this, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, number one, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, number two, and, the, and man became a living soul. Three things right there. The first thing, the dust of the ground. That's your body. And I show that. I cross a bunch of scriptures. That's where you come from. You come from dust, and you and 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 you eventually decay and turn back to dust. That's that's our couple of bodies. Um, it wasn't like that initially, but because of the fall, then our, our bodies are then subject under corruption. So it you know breaks down. That's why that's why whenever you pull the curtains back and you see all that dust, most of that is you. <laughs> uh, you know, but but that just shows you how. I mean, that, and that just ought to tell you out there just how depraved you really are. You know, just how wicked you really are. You're literally decaying before your very eyes. <laughs> you know, we are breathing in our, our own dead particles. That just, you know, and so that just tells you a lot, you know, but something number will, two is something you will never hear Joel Osteen preach. No, no, no. <laughs> not very no. positive. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, and the second thing there is breathe into his nostrils with the breath of life. And I go and I get into a big old thing there in the book. That's referring to your spirit. And I show a lot of the different cross references. And again, and again, I don't have to go to the Greek to do it. You don't have to. I show it from the scriptures. It just defines itself. Um, the word, you know, the, the spirit there is a, it's connected to breath, air. That is what your spirit is, but it gives you life, you know. And so and so that's what I'm talking about. The breath of life. He breathes into someone. And they have life. It gives them that their spirit. And um, like I said, I cover a lot of the scriptures in that in the book. Um, and then number three, and man became a living soul. And then your soul is the is the third part of you. Your soul, and this is important to get because, um, um, you know, like I said, there because there, there's because there's two views out there. There's trichotomy, which is what the Bible teaches, which is what you have to believe. Which if you just, I guess, I mean, just read First Thessalonians five twenty three. I mean, you cannot get around that. Man, it, the man is a is a tripart being, but then there's not another view that says man. No, man is bipart, and he's just body and spirit. Or and, and what they'll say is they'll say soul and spirit are the same thing. You can't do that. You you cannot make that distinction. But I mean, I, like I said, I show the quotes from people like you know people like John MacArthur, who says it's you're you're bipart. And no, we're not. No, we are not. You have a body, soul, and a spirit. And there are a lot of different reasons why they get rid of the soul. There's a whole different and I, and I list them in the book. But what's interesting too is because the new versions. They almost across the board. They get rid of it. They get rid of that that statement. They will get rid of the semicolon and they will just get rid of soul and they will say man became a living being, and they're erasing your soul. And the problem with that is because okay, your soul, that is your conscious being. That is who you are. I am not my body. You know that that's important to get. You know I'm looking. I'm looking out of my body. Yeah, you may see my body speaking and look. You, you say, "Well, I'm looking at you." Well, yeah, that's a part of me, but I am, am myself. I am not my body. I am my my soul, you know. And that's such an important you know connotation to get um, in scripture. And if you can figure that out, you will you will um, understand the Lord a lot better in that point. And because the way, and so like I said, I, I show all the correlations there how that works. But that's that's a person for you. And there are other scriptures we can cover and more in depthly if you want, but that's just the basics. That's a person, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, again, to get into all the different things here, and what is a spirit? How does it relate to the mind and the soul? And and you know, when you get saved, uh, the Bible talks about the circumcision made without hands, body and soul, and the body and soul relationship in the Old Testament when the blood wasn't there. And there's so much. Mm -hmm. There's so much, and that's why I'm and, saying, and, and, and all that got, all that's covered in the book. So yeah. I would cover all what you're saying. In the book, we can't just do this, you know, to, to discuss everything. It would be 12, 16 hours, maybe more, you know, to do this. That's why it's good to have written material. You know, mm -hmm. Paul, I feel like them give attendance to reading. And that that's the scriptures primarily, but there's other things that can go along with the scriptures that support the scriptures. The scriptures are the final authority, yes. But you can always go and you can see other commentary looking up the history of people's lives and their autobiographies and whatever saved people, you know, you can read, you can get all the different things there. So, but, you know, again, remember the simple, see, it gets deep. You start to look into this and you say, okay, wow, it's really getting deep, but keep with the simple. Okay.
Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Go this way. Um, right there. Let us make man in our image. Genesis chapter 2. What he do? He makes three different parts. A body, a spirit, and he becomes a living soul. It's just that simple. Okay? Keep it simple. Don't forget the simple things. All right? Um, I, you know, as a Christian, you'll get into debates with these stupid atheists or whatever else, and they'll, and they'll start getting into all this deep stuff. And you just have to say, wait a second. How did the wor world come to be? By random chance, an explosion billions of years ago? Oh, that's stupid. Keep it with something that's simple. God created the heaven and the earth. Simple. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Yep. It's in his design. Keep it simple with this whole Godhead Trinity thing. Man is created in God's image. After the similitude of God, it's just that easy. Yep. Okay. And and, and that's and those are points, like you said, I reiterate mm -hmm. so many times. It's just because it because it, it, it just comes back to the same thing over and over again. And yeah, obviously at, at the end of the day, yeah, once you get into the meat of it, yeah, it gets deep going, wow, all this, but it always goes back to that simple, like you said, the basic simple point. Yep. If you can understand that, it's it's it is not that difficult to understand at all. It's just you just have and like I said in the book, you just have to believe it. You just just don't try to figure it out in the sense of like, well, how 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 is he? That? No, don't do that. Just take it as faith, and it will make so much sense. Yeah. You know, and that's why I can speak for you. That's why you called it the definitive guide to who God is, because you define it at the very beginning. Yep. Body, soul, spirit. Man's made after the similitude of God. Three in one. Done. You've defined who God is. That's why it's the definitive guide. That doesn't mean you answer every single question that there is. It's just a simple, basic thing. You get this concept. You understand. You understand it. Like you said. Right. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, you get into the, some of the things, too. But uh, were there any other scriptures you wanted to go through there? Well, I, the only thing I was gonna I was gonna go from there was then just make some of the comparisons with the Lord, just showing the image, just br very briefly. Yeah, go just ahead. to make the correlation. So just to make a so now to make the the brief correlation here, and like I said, we're gonna keep it simple. We can get into a whole lot of things, and like I said, we will. I'm sure I'll have some questions on this later, and that's fine. But we're just gonna keep it simple. Go to uh, John chapter one. John chapter one particularly verse 18. Cause this is an important thing to get. And this is where, you know, we'll have like, again, a, a base foundation of, okay, explain what's going on here with the correlation of, of the Lord. John chapter one, verse 18 says, no man has seen God at any time. Remember God, that's referring to the father. No man has seen God the Father, at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Now, what's going on there, and this you have to understand, and I, and, I, and I cover this in meticulous detail in the book over many, many chapters, many, many scriptures, like I said, only practically a, a scripture per page every time, basically, just because it's just there's just so much scripture to cover, and that's, and, and, and that's all you need. Um, the, the I'll just say it like this. The Lord God, Jesus Christ, he is one person, one being, and he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father is the soul, the Son, or the, the Word, sometimes what he's called, what he's, what he's called here in John. The Word, that the Son, that's the body, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, that is the Spirit. There's that correlation there. And with the soul, you cannot see a soul. Like I said, but again, take me. You can, I, what, what I tell you earlier, I, you are your soul. But you cannot you cannot see a soul. You can't look inside yourself and say, "Oh, I'm a soul." But but you consciously know, "Hey, I'm I'm not I am not my actual body." You know, I'm speaking through it, and you see me. You see Brian. We see each other. You see me. I'm that physical similitude. But you cannot actually see my soul. And that's what's going on here. God the Father is the soul, and the similitude and image of God is the Son. If you don't believe me, then there's a few, bunch of places we can hit on this. Um, we'll go with, um, we'll go with Colossians chapter one. We'll start there. There's a bunch of different places we could hit on that, but we'll go to Colossians. Turn your Bible to Colossians chapter one. Give people a little bit of time to get there. Okay. Colossians chapter one. What verse? 
We'll look at um, – just to get context, we'll start at verse 13, just to get context. Okay. Um, verse, ter- verse 13, it's referring to referring to God the Father in verse 12, but then in verse, ter- verse 13 it says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, colon. So there's the context. We're talking about the Son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Verse 15, still speaking of the Son – who is the image of the invisible God, the first one of every creature. Jesus Christ is the image of that God. When you see God the Father, you see the Son. And that's why you see, and I cover this all through, I cover it again in great detail in the book. Every t- You see these statements where, where Jesus says, he that has seen me, he has seen the Father. You know, That's what he's referring to, because you cannot see physically see the Father because he is invisible. You just saw the scriptures, he's invisible. But he has a similitude that you can see. So when you see Jesus, you see the Son of God, you are seeing the Father. You are seeing that one person of God. Right. And I will say this, just kind of as an interesting little add-on. I do believe that you can see them separate, but in eternity. Because Right. Of, and there's some of that, you know, some of that's there, which, which I cover in the book. But, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. But just to, to make it for people here, you know, Revelation chapter 6, you see that souls under the altar of them that were slain for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Right. So you see souls in eternity. But mm-hmm. in life, you're not going to see a soul. No, you're, no. You're, you know, and so that's that's the, that's the whole point. Again, some of the confusion that's there, because Trinitarians will always take you to the thing of why is Jesus seated, seated at the right hand of God? You know, there's this thing there. Well, because soul and, and body can be separate in heaven. You can mm-hmm. see soul in heaven. But we're talking about when he's on the earth. Jesus yeah. Christ is the image of the invisible God on the earth. Yep. So, yeah. And so to hit just another reference in that very briefly, go to Hebrews 1, another good reference in this. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, we'll start there. Okay, you want to turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1? Again, you know, and, and, and here's the point. Just let's, we're getting into deep stuff, but we have to keep bringing it back to simple things, okay? Simple. What are we doing? Turn in your Bible, okay? That's what Jacob's book does. Here's the scripture. Look mm-hmm. at it. Right? You're going to see it. You go to a church, you see these guys a lot of times, and they will they will twist the scriptures right up in the pulpit. And you actually look. I know John MacArthur has done this a couple times. I've heard him being caught doing this. Um, I know Ruckman exposed him for doing this. They'll, they'll say the Bible says, and they won't say turn here. They'll say the Bible says, and they'll quote something, and there's no translation out there that says it. Mm-hmm. Literally. They're not quoting any version. Right. right? <laughs> That's not the mark of a, of a Bible believing Christian. And again, I'm seeing people in the comments. Why don't, Brian, why don't you debate, you know, Sam Shimon, the guy, that, that guy I was telling you. <laughs> I'll call him that. Um, you know, or, you know, Simon, Shamwell. <laughs> or what can name for Halloween? But anyway, yeah, <laughs> all there, but, oh well. um, why don't you debate it? Because we don't have the same standard. You know, no, no. You, James White. We don't have the same standard. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so those people you could, if, and I, I'll just say this to add to you: if people want, if I because because I do plan on sending this book out to people that I know are going to hate it. I mean, because I'm coming out fighting with this. I'm being mm-hmm. serious when I say that. I mean, not physically, but I'm just. You know, I mean, I'm go. I want to get that truth out there. And if if these guys were to come and say say James White, because I I quote a lot of him in my book, and I refute a ton of it. Because if you saw the last time I was on here, I we, we did a stream. I was with Brian. We exposed his book. Some of the stuff he says in that book is insane. Like it's just it it, it it's so. I mean it's I mean it's it makes orthodoxy Trinitarian you know, orthodoxy Trinitarian look stupid. I mean because he says some like really far out stuff. Like what yeah. you know? Yeah. But, but yeah, the point is, go ahead. Just so saying, if you've seen that live stream, go ahead and, and watch oh, it. We've right, crashed his silly little papal book. Yeah, yeah. But um, I was gonna say, oh yeah. But like I said, I would never even debate. Because, because again, debate is one of the things that's a trait of being a reprobate, Romans chapter one. So there's that. But, but the thing is too, um, I would never debate James White or or a, or a Sam Shamwow Simone or you know, or any of these guys because because I I can already tell you what the argument's going to be because it's they're going to keep the, the whole argument's going to be them trying to disprove the King James. All it all, all this text should be this and this should be that. That's all. If you read James White's book, Forgotten Trinity, I have both first and second editions. That's all he does. It's just this this Greek text says this, this translation says this, this we're not we're not too sure about. 
It's just, it's not, it's literally nothing but philosophy. And all these books that I quote from, you can see, you can't really see them well, but I'm kind of pointing my shelf because I have some books you can see. And I've got a ton more I quote from than just those. But the, their, their books, it's like, it's 100, 200, 300 pages of just philosophy. It, there is like, barely, I mean, I'm talking when I say this, there is almost hardly any scripture. And if there is, it's from like a new version. And so the point is, if I debate these people, that's all it's going to be. They won't. They will not be able to answer the points. It's just going to be, we've always believed this way. We've always said this, and you know, your King James Bible's got errors. That's the it would be the entire bait. And I'd be having to sit there and say, no, the, no, no. The King James says that you know, it wouldn't even be a worthy debate. It'd just be literally, we're just, you know, Wait. I mean, it just be going nowhere. Yeah, it's a waste of time. That's all it is. Yeah, right. Hebrews but anyways, one, yeah, ahead. yeah. Back to Hebrews chapter one. Verse one, you get another pretty clear definition of this to explain some things. So it starts off with God. That's the Father. God, God the Father. We know that. God the Father. God who at sundry times and divers may have spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now stop right there. Remember when we said Hosea chapter 12? He spoke unto the prophets, used similitudes, make the correlation. Um, verse two, hath in these last days spoken un un unto us by his son. Now we're talking about the son. By his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, again, I cover verse 3 uh, again in, in, in depth. Well, the whole passage in depth in the book, but verse 3, again, the brightness of his glory, that's one of the similitudes. Right there, he's got an image, the brightness of his glory. That's one of his similitudes, the, you know, the, the glory of the Lord. I cover that in detail in the book. But the express image of his person, and that's the thing. There is just one person, and it's and, and, that, and that's it. It's just one person. You will not find two. You will not find three. You will not find nine. You will not, you know, what, you know it's just one. One person, and that one person is Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus, he is that image of that person. And not just the image, but the express, right? The definitive, if you will, the yeah, yeah, like the definitive that he is. When you see God, you know you're seeing the Son. That's why it says what it says in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And just uh, the quick reference that because there are four places in the Scripture where where God is spoken of as a person, not persons, not anything else, just singular person. You can look these up. I don't have these written down, but it's uh, Job chapter thirteen, verses seven and eight. It's the first time. Then Matthew, Matthew uh, twenty, was it Matthew twenty six twenty seven? I think what the verse is. Don't quote me on that one. Look, but it's in Matthew twenty six, um, referring to where where Christ is called person. Second Corinthians chapter two verse ten is called person. And again, right here, reference to the Son. You know, He is the image of the person of God. It's all one person. There is not persons. There is not multiple per, you know, there, anything else. It's just one person: body, soul, spirit. The mm -hmm. Father is the soul, the Son is the body, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the spirit, you know, in relation to man. And like I said, I cover all the scriptures in that def definitively showing that's what they are. And I show all the correlations there. I mean, you cannot duck it. it it's there. But that's that 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 right there is just you can see the basic correlations. So and like I said, it's just it's really not that complicated. You just have to just remember that just take the Bible as it says, words have a meaning. When it says image, it means image. When it says God, it means God. When it says this, it means that. You just, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's not that complicated. And, and like you said, you just always go back to that milk. If we're made in the image and likeness of God, you know, man is, we have a bi soul spirit. Okay, then, logically speaking, that would mean God would have to have a bi soul spirit. It's just, yeah. It's just what it, it's just what it has to mean, you know? And you have to, if, if, you, if you don't believe that, you're changing the scriptures, it, period. You right. Know? And and you have you have to fit the Godhead into body, soul, spirit. One of them is right. the body, one is the soul, one's the spirit. You can't have body and two spirits or three spirits or some other kind of a thing. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the point I gotta say this, the, the the greatest part of Brother Jacob's book, me having read it, um, the the very best point, the foundational point of the 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 what the enemy does, it's all about their hatred for the body of God which is Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And yep. he got that point home over and over and over again. And it's always been a weird thing for me as I've, as I've gone back and forth with Trinitarians over the years and they'll, they'll just get so angry. Jesus is not the father. How dare you say that's, that's some kind of blasphemous statement. And I think, yeah, 
why are you trying to tear Jesus down? And that, that's always been a confusion to me. Just, you know, because it, 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 it is a spirit. It, it's a spirit of Antichrist, which I show in the book. There is that gen, genuine hatred for the flesh of God. And, and like I said, like you said, I cover all different points. Jesus have his own mouth. He's standing right in front of them, telling them who he is. And they're just like, no, we don't see it. We're, you're, you're this, you're that, you're this. And he's like standing right in front of them. No, confirming the word, doing all these miracles, saying this is what I am. And they're like, nope. You don't see it. Nope. You're a heretic. You know, <laughs> kind of type of, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just some, some things just don't change. And, and you see it in the book. And that's what I'm saying. When you study out Trinitarianism and, and all these other things, cause it comes down to this. And it, it, when, you, when you read their books, like I have, you see this, the, the thing is the debate every single time is between father and son. That's usually the debate where the debate comes in. Even the first councils, when they were setting up the Trinity doctrine back in AD, 25, you know, the Council of Nicaea, the Council of Constantinople, the Council of, uh, you know, Chalcedon, and, you know, a bunch of these other ones, you know, they had, right? And in, in, the, in the, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth centuries, you know, um, the debate every single time was they had to try to figure out, okay, okay, you know, how do we figure out father and son here, you know? And it always comes down to that flesh of God every single time. And you see it in the scriptures, oh, especially in the book of John, over and over and over and over. That's the problem every single time. And you see, and in John 6, which is a big chapter I cover, you see that. Jesus performed miracles. He brings, you know, uh, bread and fish, you know, from heaven in front of them. And those Jews come back the next day and they want, they want more. They want more of that. And Jesus is like, no, don't hunger after that. Hunger after, after the bread. And it's going to give you eternal life. I'm paraphrasing. And, um, and then he, he's referring to himself. And he keeps saying it over and over. And these Jews just don't get it. They just do, they keep thinking physical and eventually he, he's like, no, outright. No, I am that bread of life. Your father is a man in the wilderness and are dead. You know, you eat of this bread one time. That's it. You will be fully satiated. That's it. Obviously, we're, you're still going to die physically. We know that. All, but that's not what he's talking about. You know, these people, they're continually lusting after the flesh, the flesh. So they have a problem with that flesh. They need to continue eating it. And so then. They see Jesus Christ, they hate it because, and I cover this because that whole thing of in John 6 where they're eating with the manna, that's works. And when you really break it down, and I show the scriptures for it, it's the continual striving for more and more and more. That's a perfect example of Catholicism, mm -hmm. the mass. You're never, it's the, the sacrifice is never complete. You're not, you don't have no assurance of your salvation. You continually just keep doing it over and over and over again. And you're not, you're not even sure. You're continually eating, which is what they teach, you know? Yeah. It just which a prime example of that. But with Jesus, that's why people hate it because he's that perfect sacrifice right there in front of you. I've accomplished everything. It's just me and nobody else. Yeah. That's it. And people hate that because it has to involve them yeah. every single time. It cuts down their self-righteousness. Yep. Exactly. And I think it's funny too that that they'll get into this thing of <clears throat> that the in the beginning there were three spirits, you know, or although say two spirits, and the love between them was the Holy Spirit, you know, whatever. And yeah. And they'll get into this thing of, well, Godhead actually could also be stated as Godhood. And then no. you know, Jesus was created and then he achieved Godhood. He did achieve divinity. You know, why? What's the satanic underlying principle there? Which, again, you cover in your book. So, well, and that is you can be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yep. You can, your flesh is not corrupt. It's not bad. You can do good things with your flesh and eventually kind of get that same Godhood mantle mm -hmm. of Godhood that Jesus Christ took on. You know, because he's not the father. He's not God the father. He's 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 attained God. <laughs> right. And see, again, you go back to the simple. OK, if Jesus Christ was created, then what was he in eternity? Whatever. How mm -hmm. can he claim to be God if he's created? There's right. so many things that you go back to. But it goes back to the three body, soul, spirit. Man is made after the similitude of God, the likeness of God. Go back to the simple. Again, see, it starts to get a little bit deep. You say, wait, let's go back to the simple. What is the, what is the similitude of God? I am created after the similitude of God. I have a body, soul, spirit. God has a body, soul, spirit. Simple. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, and I find it interesting, too, that, that kind of what you're referring to, the thing of they have to change the scriptures. They have to add to the scriptures. And we were talking a little bit about this before we got started. It's it's kind of like the Trinitarians add to the scriptures. The modalists will oftentimes take away. They'll, yeah. they'll go through like where it, it says that there's modalism. Give people a brief idea of what modalism is. 
Um, in the book, I show a lot of different quotes from from like the head superintendent of UPCI. You can't duck it. That guy is the, the head modalist, you know. So you can't get around and say, oh, he's no, he's a modalist. And I show the quotes in there. Define what UPCI is. UPCI is is the is the uh, United Church Pentecostal International. That's the largest uh, oneness Pentecostal denomination out there. They they represent I think I think one fourth roughly of all Pentecostals. So that's a lot of Pentecostals. Um, okay. There are a lot of wonder people. Oneness is another way of saying modalist. If you, if you didn't know, um, sometimes you'll hear them say what well, it's a, a Jesus only. That's a term you'll hear. You'll hear uh, Sabellianism. You know, you know, those are the different terms. You know, I know I've been labeled as a you, Brian, which is which is funny because we don't teach that. But I digress um, to basically summarize what it is. And I show all the quotes in this. Basically, they they teach that God is one person, but it's really screwy. They say that. OK, they say that that God is just one undivisible spirit. So there's three things to him, but it's all just one. Like, so, so whereas with, with say you and I as, as, as persons, we're by soul and spirit. We're one person, but we are very clearly distinct. No escaping that. Well, they don't, they don't really believe that. They just believe that there's one indivisible spirit and those, and the, and, and, and those, and those father, son, Oh, well, well, I should say Father Word. That's how they would say it. Father Word, Holy um, Holy Spirit. Those are just different um, modes of operations, different ways they do things. So the, and so people have compared it to as being as God is, is their God being some sort of like a shapeshifter in ways where because he's changing all the time what he's doing. You know, one minute he's this, next minute he's that, and this minute, next minute he's this, and it's just uh -huh. they like you said they have to subtract a lot of scriptures to teach right. where they got to go and and, and their main. Their main premise is God on earth, God in eternity. Yeah. Again, you see that they're removing one. You only have yeah. two. Not God in eternity number three. You know, the second mm -hmm. eternity or something. It's just mm -hmm. when Jesus is talking to the Father, it's God on earth talking to God in heaven. But they're right. <laughs> because let's get into the next point. Because that hatred for the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I show their quotes. They teach that the son, they, and this is the key thing. They make a, a they make a di differentiation between father or I'm sorry, the son and the word. If you don't know the King's Bible, the, the capital W word appears seven times each time referring to Jesus Christ. Okay. If, in front of the son of God, we can go, we can run the re references if we need to, whatever, but that's what that means. Modalist, they differentiate that. And what they say is that, and they, and they tell it explicitly that what they call the incarnation when, when the son, you know, came into the, into the world, the son was outright created. So the flesh, so so there was no flesh whatsoever. It was just, and so therefore they believe in theophanies. They have to by default, you know, so all those appearances of God. Oh, that's just that's just a shadow. That was like the that was like the word they used. It's just a shadow. <laughs> um, but they just say it's a spirit, and then that body was created, and then that spirit then indwells in that. But then, but at the same time, like you said, there's God on in heaven, and then. The son, he's also God, you know, because the, you know, this Godhood, if you will, is dwelling in the son. And so now it's God. So, and so now it's like divinity speaking to, you know, divinity, deity speaking to deity, God speaking to God, you know, and it's this, it's this really weird thing they get into. And I show the quotes and, and they even get at one point, you can read the book. They actually outright because they they limit the sun. They say this. They limit it to the incarnation being being completely physical. Well, they openly admit that the sun eventually ceases to exist. I show the quote where they say it, which is just blasphemy of the of the nth degree. You know, <laughs> he's not on earth. He has to be totally in heaven, and you can't have two in heaven. Even right. though you do in Revelation chapter five. Yeah, which is what they, which what they, which they said the quotes. They say, "Oh, that's only that's only symbolic. It's only it's only metaphorical." You know, no, it's and you can see that. And I show the scriptures, both Old and New Testament, that happens. That's not that's not metaphoric or whatever you want to say. No, that's what he can do. It's just they have a problem with the flesh of God, and and, and that's why they have they have weird things where they say, "Oh, the right hand of the Father." That just means it's just the the power and authority that he has. Mm -hmm. No, no. It's, it says he's he's sitting, he's standing at the right hand of the Father. He walks up and takes the book out of the one who's on the throne. Revelation five. I mean that that's not that is not symbolic. That they do that. You know what I mean? So it's just modalism is crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know, and and again, going back to something very simple. Again, deep, simple. Keep going through this. 
And yep. that is, as a Christian, how much do you love Jesus Christ? How much do you want to see Jesus Christ exalted and magnified? You want to see him at the very top? Well, no, well, we have to knock him down a level. He's mm -hmm. not quite the top. He's down a little bit. That's what Trinitarianism, Trinitarianism does. That's what modalism does. That's yep. not what Bible-believing Christians do. Jesus and, is at the very top. When he right. walked on earth, he was completely God. Yep. And that's one of the points I make with with because you, you said with the thing of oh God really means Godhood no it doesn't and I show like many different chapters and I show it it is defining Godhead is so simple because because I, I show a quote from James White he's like he's he's like some the King James says Godhead and that's a very you know very confusing term and no it's not it's folks the word Godhead we don't call it Trinity because that's not in Scripture and there's a bunch of implicit means behind that as well the term is Godhead appears three times in scriptures Colossians chapter or yeah, Colossians chapter nine, or no, Colossians chapter two, verse nine. Excuse me, there's no chapter nine. Colossians chapter two, verse nine. Romans chapter one, verse twenty, and Acts seventeen, verse twenty-nine. Those are the three times that Godhead appears, and it is a simple compound word: God and head. He is God, and He is the head of all things. He is overall. You see this in Romans chapter nine, verse five. Speaking, speaking of Christ, it says, "Who is overall everything overall." God, God, that means the Father, God, blessed forever. Amen. That's what that means. That is what the Godhead means. He's overall. That's why that's why it says that he that this what it says that he might have the preeminence. And actually, on that note, let me just let's turn to a scripture here on that. Um 1 Timothy chapter 6. Um you want to turn your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Looking at verse 13. This is an important reference to get. That ties into exactly what I'm saying. First Timothy chapter six. What verse? Starting at verse thirteen. Okay. To get some context, it says, "I'll go and read it here." It says, "I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou commit. Yeah, I'm sorry. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ." This is where it's key here. Verse fifteen. Who in his times he he shall shew who who is the blessed and only that's the key word only potentate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let me stop right there. Only problem right there. If you believe in Trinitarianism, what does that say about the Father and the Spirit if they're completely separate? If they're two totally separate persons, what does that say? It says only. Now remember, if you understand Trinitarianism, and I and, and, and I and I use their words against them in my book, you know they are co-equal, co-eternal, co this, this, then the other, right? Okay. Well, if they're all omnipotent, if they're all omnipotent, all you know, all you know, omnipresent, whatever else, right? But if they're omnipotent, that means all powerful. You know, they're you know they're the head, the Godhead. Then why does it say only potentate? Mm -hmm. That's the problem. He is the only potentate. He is the only king. He is the only Lord, Lord God Almighty, yep. right there. So and it's you keep reading in verse sixteen. It gets even worse. Right, and then and then it says, "Who only hath immortality?" Stop right there. What does that say about the Father and the Holy Spirit? Are you saying that 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 they don't have immortality? And plus, another thing too. Back if you, um, we're not going to go there. But if you go back over to Colossians, where we we're just reading earlier, chapter one, it says, "Speaking of the Son." of the son by him all things consist all means all mm -hmm. what does that say of the father and the spirit then well See? Up, it's like life support going from jesus to them R right right <laughs> but <laughs> but, it, but you see he only hath immortality because why jesus is the godhead he is father he is son he is the holy ghost he that's why he has only immortality he 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 it he is the way the truth and the life Mm -hmm. He can give it. He can take it away because he is the one that has immortality. He cannot be killed. He's from everlasting, you know, but he continue. It says dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto. I'll talk about that in the book. That's the, again, the, that's the glory of the Lord there. You cross some sort of back over to, to Hebrews chapter one, the brightness of his glory. You're seeing the connections already. Um, who no man has seen nor can see. Wait, what? You know what I mean? It's like, huh? I thought we can't see the sun. Or, or, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm sorry. I thought we can't see the Father. Well, you can't, but you can see the Son. And so you're seeing here, you're seeing aspects of the Father being spoken of as the Son, mm -hmm. because it's the same being. 
And you cross them, and that's what I'm saying. Cross them back over to Hebrew chapter one, where we're, where we were at earlier. It all fits right in. And I showed just numerous, numerous scriptures in the book where this happens all the time. Stuff that is just blatantly speaking about a different uh, part member of, of the Godhead that are just that would that would go against what we had already what's been established. And you go, well, how does that work? Because it's all one being. You can say different things about each other. You know, again, take myself as a person. I'm three different parts to me, but I'm still one person. But if my my spirit does something, I can still claim that it's me because it's still a part of me. You know, it's not three different people, you know. So it's just like I said, you have to go back just to basic, like you said, the basic milk doctrine, just basic logic. Well, this can't make so this don't work. It says he's the only the blessed and only potentate. He only hath immortality. Okay, that's speaking of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's simple. It's just so simple. And just I'm saying, you just have to believe the Bible. And that's why with Trinitarianism, why it is such a satanic and deceptive doctrine, because I show in the book, all they do is they add to all these scriptures. And and and, and again, they, they don't touch these scriptures. I you know, when, when's the last time you, you've ever heard a Trinitarian talk about that? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm just saying, you know, I, I, I don't care if the new versionist or professing King James Bible believer in, in air quote there, you know, because they're they don't want to cover it. Yeah. And, you know, the whole thing, the, the Trinity deal right there again, yep. for, you quote from this in your book and you show mm -hmm. where they openly admit that the Trinity stuff is added and it comes from philosophy. Yep. They admit and it. Yeah. Oh, and, and on that point, because I now that I show the catechism that I show many of these church fathers that formulated the doctrine, people like Augustine and like one of the big guys that did it, and some of those other guys, I I forget the names off the top of my head, but I show their quotes. I show them they explicitly say that we that that we are because which I cover this in the book because they had to that they, they are they are syncretists, they had to blend the pagan paganism of, of Rome and all the other European stuff around them. And then they had to, okay, take Christianity aspects of it and just take that slap it over their paganism. So the problem is they brought in these unsaved philosophers and scholars and apologists to try to explain the doctrine of the Trinity now. So they can, so they can, it, it can coexist with what they had previously as, as not to offend the masses so they can control them better. I show the quotes. Um, but um, these, these uh, scholars, they um, literally say, oh, we call them persons only because we don't want to be um, silenced because we have to call them something. They don't even know. And they admit it. I show the quotes. They don't even know what they're talking about. And even Tertullian, which I show the quotes, Tertullian, the guy who came up with this, he's the first guy to come up with it. It was the Bible does not teach it. It did not exist previously. There are no there's no evidence to prove that. Tertullian was the first guy to come up with it. And I show directly from his writings, he admits that he was in the minority. What he came up with was totally against what people knew because it's just Bible basics. Tertullian's thing is is completely just paganism because he was a totally lost heretic. I mean, yeah. and, and believe me, and believe me, I, I've tried. I mean, I, I've read you know Tertullian's writings. It's like the mo it's like just the typical stuff that we see from all these false prophets and heretics. They say all these just big allure, alluring words and. Just how look at how fine this is. It's just typical of every false prophet that's ever been alive. They say all oh, these just these big words, and they say, and people go, "Oh, he's so smart," you know. Yeah. The church mm -hmm. create its own language to mm -hmm. befuddle the masses. It's Nicolaitanism, which again you cover that in your book. Yeah, and, you know. But again, you you go back through, and, and and this is also something you covered in your book, and that is that the Trinity existed long before. Oh yeah. Oh before. yeah. Long before. There were pagan trinities down through all different sorts of heathen cultures. And what does Catholicism do? Catholicism takes, they take the scripture right here like this, and they take tradition and they merge them together. Okay. And then they overthrow the scriptures with their tradition. That's what they do. That's how they conquer people. You know, again, don't forget that Roman Catholicism, don't leave out the Roman part there. It's the Legion of Rome. It's and again, they'll take certain pagan concepts, pagan ideals, and then they'll Christianize them. They'll, they'll make them official, you know, holy teaching of the church. The, the pagans go, oh, so you know, those are it's actually, you know, um, Joseph, you 
know, Mary Jesus or something. Father of the Holy Ghost. Oh, wow. That's interesting. And, and then they draw the, the pagan Egyptians and then they go over here and they get the Greek people to pull them in and they can pull the pagan Romans in. That's what they've really done. Um, I'm doing a lot of study right now, just kind of a little side note here on the Middle Ages and like a lot of the wars, the Crusades and whatever else. And that's exactly what the Catholics did. They go in, they, they, they get the leaders to join Catholic knighthood. They bring them in and then they assimilate the culture and draw it right into Roman Catholicism. That's what they did. The Counter Reformation, the Jesuits want to do. It's all about, well, we believe the same old, you know, hey, we're all, we all believe the Trinity, don't we? Mm -hmm. All in. Are we really that different? I mean, hey, at least we can agree on the Trinity, you know? Yeah, that's what they're doing. And that's what they're doing with this whole election thing coming up, by the way, the selection deal. Yeah, if Catholics and Protestants, we need to join together under the banner of Donald Trump. What about the fact that he's he just appointed a, a Roman Catholic woman to the, you know, um, what's Supreme the court? Supreme Court. I was thinking Senate, but Supreme Court. Um, Amy Comey, whatever her name is. Amy Comey yeah. Barrett. Yeah. I mean, our our forefathers, our Christian you know, heritage of this country is not Catholic. And, and yet it's just Catholic put in, Catholic this, Catholic that. Oh, okay. so, and, and, and even, even there's so even Biden. Biden's an open Catholic. So yeah. whoever you're getting yeah. is a Catholic. I and mean, Kamala Harris, you know, she did a lot of her, her work, you know, in her university stuff at one of the Jesuit schools. I think what's the one in California that Gavin Newsom went to? Oh, I can't, I can't think of the name either, but I know, I know what I'm talking about. Santa Clara University. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And But, you know, it's the Catholics. Again, why is Trinitarianism so important to the Catholics? I mean, they in here, and again, quoted in Brother Jacob's book, the Trinity is the central core teachings of, teaching of the Catholic Church. Yep. And you get into this thing, and you show at one point where James White actually says, in eternity past, there were three spirits. Not one yep. verse. Scripture says that, but yeah. one scripture does say this, and let's go there. Go ahead, give the people that where the what is the teaching of the three spirits? Okay, because they are. Well, oh yeah, I'm gonna say it, it's oddly enough the, 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 the Trinitarians they're halfway there. They're 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 knownly preaching prophecy. Um, mm -hmm. and I cover this in, in, in detail in the book, but Revelation chapter 16. If you go there, we'll start there, and then we can backtrack a little bit if we need to. Um, Revelation chapter 16. Starting in verse 13. I'll give you a minute to turn there. Yep. Um, so it will I'll read the verse here and we'll cover it. Um chapter uh, chapter 16, verse 13 says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, one, out of the mouth of the, of the beast, two, out of the mouth of the false prophet, prophet, three. For for they are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth. They're controlled, in other words, as kings. Re 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 Revelation 17. And of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You know, Armageddon. Um, but the thing is, in this time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, people have said, people, they often attribute just, well, there's going to be an Antichrist, which is true. There's going to be one man there. Well, it's not going to be one man. There's going to be two more people showing up. And it's going to be that false prophet and that dragon, that dragon being Satan. And it's going to be a trinity. And you see... These three spirits coming out of them. And so what people like James White, and there was even a quote out of one of like the, it was like, I think it was like the first community catechism they were talking about. They, they openly say the father is, is is a spirit. The spirit is a spirit. The son, you can't see the son, you know, and, and, until, um, until he got a body, you know. They're saying three different spirits. Mm -hmm. And so these Trinitarians, hopefully that noise ain't bought it coming in. <laughs> Sorry, neighbors. But anyway, um, the point is with spirits, that's what it is. I mean, they're literally preaching that stuff and they don't, they don't even know it, you know, but, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's that spirit of antichrist to talk about. It's that, it's that mystery of iniquity that, that are, it's already working in the world, you know? And that's why it, that's why it is such a deceptive doctrine. That's why these people, they get so rabid. Jesus is not the father. Like you're saying, they get just so angry with that stuff because why it's a spirit. Unfortunately, a lot of these people out there, unfortunately, they're not they're not saved. They're not saved, and they have a spirit behind it. Now, you can get messed up, sure. That's there. You can get messed up in philosophy. There are warnings about that, and it is possible, sure. But a lot of these people, unfortunately, 
they're just not saved. And I and I make this point up front in the book, and I know this is a really big, bold claim to make, but it's just the truth. And I said, if you can get to this thing cover to cover, you read all the way through it, and you can come to the conclusion and say, no, I, I, I reject this thing. You're not saved. And I'm just saying that right up front, people say, well, how, how dare you say that? I, Brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, and everyone else out there, the scriptures are laid out. And I, and that's why, I call, again, I call it definitive. I put out everything. I throw the kitchen sink in there and then some. You know, I mean, it's, you're not getting around it. And again, like I said, I don't say that to be be boastful or anything. I'm just stating as as a fact. It's like, no, you read this broken down, completely explained. And you and you say, I, I reject it. I'm still going to say Trinity, God in three persons. Or modalism, no, he's he's just one and it, he's different modes or or, or, you know, Arianism. Oh, no, no. Oh, 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 G oh, G Jesus was created. He's a lesser God or just whatever. You can look at that and then and, and look at the book and say, still say that. Sorry, you're, you're just not saved. Yeah. And it, and it's, and, and it's a spirit. And that's why people get so rabid wide that rabid by that's why you keep pushing it. And I didn't say this specifically in the book. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to keep some things in my back pocket, if you will, but you see it in pop culture. You see, there are trinities in pop culture. I have references, I mean, I have set aside where you see this even in pop culture. They are pushing people to accept this, this idea of a trinity, you know, because that's what's coming. And when they see it, and I cover this in the book in detail, when this trinity shows up, they're going to be, again, thinking, you have to think like, like a Trinitarian for a second. They're going to be glorifying and magnifying one another. The father's going to be doing all the, the false prophet being the father there. He's going to be doing miracles, raining fire from heaven, make, make, making graven images speak, actually, and then make them speak by the power of devils. And then so, and people can go, whoa. And, 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 so, and so they can say, dislike the Bible, mocking the Bible. They can say, see, you know, here is my son. Hear ye him. You know, that, you know, you know, this is my beloved. I'm paraphrasing it from scripture. And so the people can point to the son or the, the false prophet can point to the son speaking by the power of the Holy ghost, you know, the Holy ghost, the, the dragon, the devil spirit there. Then, then the, then the son, the, the son, you know, the son of perdition, you know, he can then come out and say, everyone, we need to take this mark. And I'm going to go out there and conquer and to conquer, you know, because he comes in on, on his white horse. You see, you see all those parallels there. And that's why there's such a big push for that. Yeah, absolutely. Can everybody hear me again? I saw some of you were saying you, I was kind of breaking up there. I must have triggered the uh, artificial intelligence bots here or something. <laughs> Had to cut me out because I was saying, don't, you know, I was cutting on Trump and the Jesuits, I guess. So, yeah, we were talking about that the other day during Skype and, 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 and you said Trinity and then the, the, the Wi Fi just cut out. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many different arguments. Um, and again, you, you, you know, to get into it in preaching, to get into it in a video live stream type of thing, very difficult. Um, I found that it's been one of the limitations of King James Video Ministries that I've been struggling with for a long time. And that is um, like with my wife and I, we were going to do the thing of uh, the pharmacopoeia inquisition. And she just has so much information from the medical establishment and to put it into video it's just not possible you just can't do it it takes too long to sit there and go through the books and open it up an overhead camera okay can you see the quote here and you, writing it into a book when you have a really important subject that has a lot of documentation it comes out in a book much better and that's why i'm saying you know buy the book if you want answers to all the different arguments, if you want a good book, get Brother Jacob's book. I read it. You know, there was there was points I could see. That, yeah, I, I, I made some of those points in some of my sermons. Brother Jacob made some of these points. I've heard other brethren make some of these points. But there was a whole lot in there that I just thought, oh, wow. Yeah, I never saw this tie in before. And, oh, wow, I didn't think about that point and this point. And, and you know, one of the things that you brought up, brother, which I thought was so good was, um, people say, you know, well, was Jesus a schizo because he was speaking to the Father? If the Father is Jesus, then, then you know, he's he speaking to himself. And you said, well, Ephesians chapter five says, speaking to yourselves in Psalms and song. We're commanded to speak to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, wow, right there. Yeah, I, it's just basic like that. I mean, and there's scriptures too. Again, you know, he's counseled by his own will. He mm -hmm. speaks to himself. 
that's why you see the us. You see that in scripture, and I can I cover more references too to that, you know, just because because I, I I looked at a couple of comments, I've seen some questions. People said, you know, well, okay, what about this with this? It's in the book. I, mean, I answered in the book, and that's and that's why that's why I say and that's why again I, I say definitive, and I have to just keep emphasizing this too because every every point out there that I that any Trinitarian could ever have or modalist or pick anything, you know. It it is answered by the scriptures, and it's not my opinion. It's not my philosophy. I give the scriptures, and every little point these people can think of, it's been answered. And then, and then on top of all, then then I then I actually take the time to actually refute the Trinitarian thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just a double whammy of you. You're not getting around it. Yep. You know. So, where can people get a copy of the book? All right, let me share my screen here. Um, go here. Uh, oh, the share screen. Okay, share screen. Hit this. Share audio. Share. Okay. So we go. Can you guys see this right here? I'll do it this way for them. You see this? The the, the bookstore here. Lulu dot com. Yep. Okay. So if you want to find the book, it is available for purchase today. It's been released today. So this is when I'm, I'm, I'm officially releasing it. You go to lulu.com. Just type in lulu.com or or or, um, or type in lulu publishing, whatever. It'll come up. Type in the Lord of Glory. Here's my book right here. You can either you can either search for that book right there, just the Lord of Glory. It'll come up or search my name, Jacob M. Thompson. If you go to my author, the author thing, you'll pull up my other books I've got, How Do We Save the Note, Rumson Contrast, and the, the latest, The Lord of Glory. You click on it here. Here's the book. Um, it is $29.99. Um, again, which I think is a, a very more than fair price, in my opinion. Um, I mean, because like I said, what you're getting, you are I mean, you are getting such scriptural wealth. I mean, you I mean, it's just incredible. So that's the book, like I said, lulupublishing.com, The Lord of Glory, The Definitive Guide to Who God Is, written by my name, Jacob M. Thompson. You can buy it here. There's a description for it, and that's where you can find it. Hey, brother, take the <clears throat> the, um, the the link to that exact page there. Could you put it over in the um, the comments? The comments, yeah. Okay, there, there are a bunch of people already did. <laughs> oh. oh, never mind. <laughs> so if you all can see it, that's where you can you can, uh, you can get it here. Yeah. And um, so that's what that's at. And again, I mean, what, what you're going to get, and I got, I'll, I'll stop sharing here. Um, what you're going to get with the, with this book, just to kind of just explain a little more things to give a brief overview. You are basically getting three books in one. You are getting one book explaining who we are as a person broken down. I cover things that I have heard no one else talk about. And I show the scriptures. I show it all, how it all ties in. With, and then, and then I then I bridge the gap over to the Godhead, explaining it over the. It, it, I mean, the book is of forty seven chapters, and uh, the book and the book is, is it's a it's four hundred forty five pages. And we cover. I mean, I cover a lot of ground in this, and there's scripture after scripture after scripture showing who the Godhead is, what he is, explaining this, explaining this, explaining this, and a lot of it again. It, it does get meaty, but I try to explain in a very simple to understand manner. Always bring it back to the milk, reemphasizing, look, just keep it simple. Here's what it is. Yes, it's a big thing. Yes, yes, our feeble minds cannot understand why or how he's doing something. You you just can't. And that's why I, I have said I'll never understand everything about God because you you just can't. He's the complete I mean, when you realize just how much of a little peon grasshopper we are, you know, this is what the Bible calls us. We're called little grasshoppers in Isaiah, you know. And you look at the Lord, I mean, you you can't understand that, but what I do show, and that's why I say it's definitive, is because you're not going to get these points ever else. There's never, like I said, there's never been a book like this. There just simply hasn't. And I and I'm more than confident in saying, if you want to know about the Godhead, this book will cover the answers. And and now, and, and there are things too, probably later on in, in the life in life where the Lord will show me something else. And event and eventually I'm, I'll probably add that back in the book if he shows you something else. You know, or 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 someone else sees something and, and they and they and they say, Hey brother, I found this. And that's all. Oh, hey, praise the Lord. And that's what happened. And that's what happened. And so like, and, and then just, you continually just keep learning and learning. And that's why it's just the Bible is such an amazing book, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, but then, but then also you're getting again, a, a third book as well, where I sit down and I show the quotes 
of these Trentarians and Modalists, but mainly Trentarians. And if you want a thorough, just debunk, gut punch, destroy, eradicate Trentarians, it's right there. And, and, and I don't spend a whole lot of time showing every single point of how they explain this. I could, but we'd be, we'd, I, this book would be double the size easily. So that just, it's not necessary. It's so redundant when I've already covered that stuff in section two of the book, you know? And, um, and I just show the scriptures where these guys just contradict themselves all the time. And it's just, I mean, I mean, we're, I mean, we're talking like blatant contradictions, just blatant, like, just what, what, what did you just say? You know, and, 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 and not from some no name preacher. And we're talking, these are the prominent speakers out there. They're saying this stuff. And so right. if you want an, a book that covers all that, this is the book to get. And I, I, and I stand by it. You know, I mean, I've been working on this thing for over a year and a half, just meticulous de re detail and research. I've bought plenty of different books. A lot of this, I, I, like I said, I mean, a ton of my bookshelf here, you know, study Bibles, a lot of eBooks that you uh, that you can't see. I've, been, I've read those just a meticulous study of scriptures, just continually praying over just say, and, and, and I've talked about it. And I, I was like, I was like, Hey, what do you think about this? You know? And they're like, Oh wow. I never saw this, you know? And it's just, this is just, just, uh, it's, this entire book is just all that combined. It's know? a collaboration of a lot of people. It isn't mm -hmm. like the beginning. It's not just brother Jacob. He wrote the book and whatever else, but he put in the time to, and the money to spend, spent the money on the books from the enemy, put in the time to compile it all together and whatever else a servant is worthy of his hire period. Okay, if you want the you know a good book on the whole subject, get the book. Mm -hmm. So, having said that, let's let's get into questions and answers. We will answer people's questions now. Um, if you're a Trinitarian, go ahead and post a question. Um, absolutely, you know we uh, will be as polite as we can. But start out by saying question and then your question. Okay, that, that makes it easier for us to see who has a question over in the comments. And uh, Okay, question, what is the difference between a modalist and a Unitarian? Well, with anything, with any of these, these different groups, there's always vari variations. So just know that there's different flavors and there's people who say, well, okay, well, I don't believe this way or something. You know, I mean, that's how it always goes. But Modalism, basically, like we covered earlier, it's basically saying one indivisible spirit where they have different three aspects or modes of operations, and they it's almost like shape shifting, if you will, and then and then that one spirit indwells in this created body, which is called God, and that's basically kind of modalism is. Unitarianism, it's basically saying that they, they say that there's only one God, but then Jesus, but then Jesus was it was a created God, or he's just a just a re regular person who has divinity or grew into his divinity you know there's different flavors of that you know but that's mainly the, the, the big difference okay and by the way let's keep the questions to this subject okay yeah um it's kind of important here question when jesus was born in the flesh was it man's flesh if not was it god's blood uh only that paid the price for sin well let's read that with scripture um you don't have to turn her none but i'll just answer that from scripture romans chapter 8 verse 3 um, for what the law cannot do, and, and that it was weak to the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So he had, I mean, so when he came to this earth, he did not look, he did not come in, in his glorious body. No way. He came in as a corruptible man. And so that's why, like you said over in James, or not James, uh, Acts 20, 28, we're talking about how it's God's blood. Yes, because it was God, the, God the Father, God that was manifested in the flesh. So it can be said that it was God's blood. So that's how I'd answer that. Yeah. Uh, that one. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Let's see here. Question Did Jesus build his church when he was in his earthly ministry or after he died on the cross when he let out the Holy Ghost? I mean, the church officially started after his death i mean i mean i mean there i mean there are references to the word church previously but it officially started after his death yeah the new testament starts with the death of the testator mm -hmm. chapter nine 
Question, you were talking about how in eternity you can see a soul, or so is Jesus physically seated at the right hand of the Father, or is Jesus the right hand of God? What about 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 3? Well, we already covered that. Um, Jesus is seated physically at the right hand of God in eternity. Okay, um, body and soul are separate there. Why? Well, because there's future prophecies. Again, he's seated at the right of hand of God until he makes his yeah. foot, you know, his enemies his footstool. So it's a future prophetic thing why the body and the soul are separate. All right. Mm -hmm. This is all covered in the book. I explain why. There's a bunch of different things that have to be covered, but yeah. Prophecies and things that have to be fulfilled before they become one. Again, you look at the later part of the book of Revelation, and there's one throne, and it says about you know the Lord there in that one throne. Uh Okay, question. It doesn't change my thoughts or beliefs, but Paul says in most of his letters, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I've heard people say that this is to prove he is three persons. How do you answer that, essentially? Well, so, well again, it says over in Scripture that that uh, that the, the Father is greater than I. In John uh, John chapter 14, I think, verse 28, I think is what it is. The Father, it means the soul, a soul is always greater than a body of flesh. Mm -hmm. it's simple so that's why that's why the father he's a bug again because the son being the body so the father is always moving over a son but they're still the same they're still the same being they're still the same person so that's just that's really all that is but yes i, I know what you're saying that is a trinitarian thing people try to say mm -hmm. yeah i think isn't that what james white said that he lost his faith or something and whatever someone joe was like somebody came into the, you know yeah Father and Jesus, that's two different, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, question. You said earlier that the false prophet will take the role of the father in the satanic trinity, yet he is described as having horns like a lamb. Like lamb, wouldn't this mean he takes the role of Jesus? Well, remember, in the Trinitarianism, what do they, they, they say they're co-equal, co-eternal, co-this. They're, they're all equal. Different persons, but they're equal. So... So when he speaks like a lamb, they're basically saying the same thing where they can, you know, glorify each other and say, see, we're, he's the father and I'm the son. And he, he had, he, he, that whole passage in Revelation 13, where, I, where, where it gets into that, I cover that in the book. You, you just have to think like a Trinitarian because I mean, like I said, I've read their books. So I know how they, I in depth. So I know how they're, they're thinking, you know, and, and seeing their proof for it. So that's just, that's how I'd answer that. I explain it better in the book. <laughs> Uh, question, why does it say God sent his only begotten son, as in Jesus God? Well, for the, in order for the Lord to take on corruptible flesh, he had to be born of a woman. And so um, that's why, you know, God is the father of Jesus Christ, and he's the only begotten son of God. Um, again, the new versions will change that in John 3.16, and they'll say the one and only son of God, which is a lie, because Adam is also called the son of God. Right. And, and like, and again, to answer your question, I have an entire chapter dedicated to that. I answered the whole thing. Why the whole begotten something. So if you want to answer that, get the book. <laughs> yeah. Question. I was arguing with a Trinitarian and he used John 8, 17 through 18. Oh. God must be two different persons because it says two men bear witness. What is the answer to this? That's that's a good question. Good, I'm glad someone asked that. Um, yeah, I've had that thrown my way as well, and I covered this in the book as well. Um, I'll, let me hit a couple of references. Oh, just something here. Um, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Um, Second Corinthians. This is a, there are different references you can go to for this, but Second Corinthians chapter uh, four, uh, chapter four, verse sixteen says this: "For for which cause we faint not, but 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 though our outward man." outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day the reality is trinitarians they they, they they skip over that your soul is in reference to the inward man because of that spiritual circumcision your body is one man and your soul is one man that's what the bible calls it so when it, so when it says when someone it says there's so when it says in john uh 8 17 uh that there are there, there are two that bear witness to me i am one the son and the other is the father but it's not two separate people that's just what they're called you just have to compare scripture with scripture but that's a good question uh question are the father and jesus separate people i'm not sure and it's confusing well we've 
kind of recovered that. No, I mean it's yeah, they're, they're not. No. Okay, I see something up here, a little snarky thing here. There are seven spirits of God, not one. The body contains many spirits, not just one spirit. LOL. Really? Uh, the word Godhead and divinity have the same tra tra translation, theos, whatever. Appears five times, not three. Um, well, uh, God does have seven spirits, but there's only one Holy Spirit. Yeah, I wish I covered that in the book. <laughs> I talked about that. The seven spirits of God are not re reference to he has seven holy spirits or something. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're a Trinitarian, which I assume that you are, um, there's only three within the Trinity, three persons in the Trinity. Are you saying that the seven spirits is a reference to seven persons? Yeah. A little confused. You might want to go back and learn first grade English. Yeah. <laughs> And that's all. That's why I cover in the book. It's just you see us all the time with these guys' quotes. It's just speaking lies and hypocrisy. Just yeah. nothing. They, they just it doesn't make any sense. It's just yeah. it's purely philosophical. What's they say? And to refute the Bible doctrine of the Godhead, they'll cut their own throat. You, yeah. I mean, you just yeah. destroy Trinitarianism with your ridiculous nonsense, there, buddy. <laughs> um, if the Bible teaches and says Godhead, where is the Trinity from? Who made that up? A uh, man in the would be it'd be second century in uh, 180 AD was a man named Tertullian. Um, he wrote he, uh, he wrote his book. Well, his letter it, um, it, it was called Against Praxis. Praxis was a supposed modalist, but his writings didn't survive, so we don't know what Praxis taught. Which, which I will say, if Praxis did say what he said, then he is a heretic. I will say that up front. But knowing Trinitarianism, how they just I've dealt with them, read their books, they just lie and contort. I have no, it wouldn't surprise me if Tertullian just made it up. You know, what he said about Praxis wouldn't surprise me. But no, Tertullian came up with it. He came up, he came up with the name for it and he created, he created all the terms for it. And then eventually his information was, was then later used and then later refined and refined further to make the, make the Trinity. Yeah. But it, the Trinity, the concept of three beings, three different persons, and they're all, they all share the same Godhood. That's a very ancient concept. Again, you know, God, God is there in the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, talking about let us make man in our image after our likeness. And the devil sees it and he says, okay, I have to imitate who God is. But he, you see, God has the ability to split off body, soul, spirit. Okay, we can't just do that at will. I can't say, here, hold on, I'm going to just. I'm my presence. That's why he's on that presence. He can be anywhere he wants to at any time. Right. We can't do that. Satan can't do that. Satan's a created being, you see. So the devil, the only way he can imitate the Trinity or the Godhead, excuse me, is by creating the Trinity. And so you see it all through pagan heathen culture. You see this concept of multiple gods and yet one God. And again, covered in the book yep. uh, <laughs> in the where they're saying these be thy gods. And yet what referring to one God and, and the Lord himself speaking to Moses at one point actually says that they're worshiping gods and yet refers to it as one God. So yep. it's a well-known thing in, among the pagans and the heathens out there oh, yeah. covered in the book. Um, okay. Was Jesus crucified? And could you reference the Bible's scriptures that verify this or anything? Uh, well, it was definitely, that's, that's the point of the gospel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Pick any of I the mean, gospel. But, but, but I mean, that being said, I mean, I explain how it all works in the book, but. That's no, that's part of the gospel. Yeah, he's he's crucified, all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna scan down through here if I don't see question in front of it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think they're trying to clarify your question. Is the Quran legitimate in saying Christ was not crucified? Sorry. If, uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh no, no, the Quran's a bunch of garbage. They yeah. full lies. I have a couple copies up here in my library, but yeah. Yeah, it's, which is funny too, because I cover this in the books. The Quran actually mentions the Catholic Mary, you know, you know, but oh, it, it didn't come from Catholicism, you know. Yeah, no, of course not. Um, important question. Half, I guess. I haven't been studying this subject for as much as you. And I'm not perfect, but since we are a watered down sinful version of God, although we are one person in body, soul, spirit, um, since God is like us, but 
amplified? Why can't he be a person just with a body, soul, or spirit? An honest question. Well, we, well, the, the entire thing I'm saying he is a body, soul, and spirit. That's the point. Now, it's not. Now, is he? Is it? Is it exactly like you and I? No, I'm not sure that in the scriptures, but you know, that's you know, likeness. You know, so he's like, but it's not 100 percent same thing. But he is a body, soul, and spirit. That's what we've been saying this entire video. Question: Does the book mention something about Ephesians two six, our soul being in heavenly places? Yep, that's uh, one of my one of my later chapters. I do cover that, explaining one of the accusations made. So making that cross reference. So yeah. Okay. Question: If God has the Holy Spirit, do we have the Holy Spirit also, or our own, if we are made in God's likeness? Well, we have our own spirit, and I cover this in section one of the creation of man. You were given a spirit, just a regular spirit, but then spiritually speaking, it it died. And so, then, and so then when you're born again, your spirit is now given life again. And then the Holy Spirit, you know, Christ in you, Christ is the Holy Spirit, Christ dwells in you. So yeah, so yeah, he it's his spirit and and yours that's been that's been quickened. <clears throat> Question. Could the reason for a future Catholic Islam war be based upon the Satanic Trinity showing up? Because one side will see it as that, but Islam will not. I could see that. I mean, I, I don't know that. That scripture doesn't say it, but I know, brother, you've covered that. The the this crusade would be against Islam, and I I would agree because if you because Islam they are radical monotheistic, you know, that worship Allah. So Allah. I, I could done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I could I could I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, clarification. Sorry, I didn't explain well. I meant, why can't God be a person with just a body? Well, I, it's just not who he is. I don't know. I mean, it's just yeah, you know. You know, and, and see, and, and again, I mean, I, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're being genuine with your question, but that's the stuff I'm talking about in the book. If you come in with these things of like. Well, but why does he have to? No, no, no! Stop! Cut! If you have that mindset, you're you're not going to figure out the Godhead. I'm telling you that, or at least understand it. I'm just telling you right now, you got to lose that that mindset. If you come in trying to trying to figure out why specifically he does things, I don't know, and that's what I mean by I can't figure out God in this entirety because I'm not God. I'm not Him. I can't sit there and say, well, I don't know why he does this. That's when you get into philosophy, and you have to be careful of that. So just, I'm sure you're being genuine, but you need to avoid that. Question, I found that Lulu would take ownership of the ISBN to publish books unless they change it. How about Amazon? It is free, just asking, thanks. Uh, well, Amazon takes a very significant part of the book. Yeah. You know, the book. And just to clarify too, I, I own my ISBN. They don't, I can get, they can give me one if I want to, but they, but then they control publishing rights. If I have my own, I control the book. And so I can sell it on there and on Amazon, Barnes and which I will be doing in the future. I'll be updating people on that, but that won't be for a while. As of now, it's on Lulu, and uh, I would ask, please purchase from Lulu. Uh, question, what does the fire line and rainbow represent on the cover? I covered half of this earlier. The line of Revelation 5, 5, the lion, Shabbat Judah. That's what that means, first of all. Um, yeah, it's, again, it's, not, it's not an image of God. It's just a symbolic yeah. thing. Jesus said, behold, the lion yeah. of the yeah, you can halfway see it behind me with it, with that painting I got there. That's what that's all it is. I don't bow down to a lion or something, <laughs> you know. Obviously not. Um, but no. And then the 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 rainbow effect thing, it, mainly because my cover went through a bunch of alterations. But and, and I cover a chapter of this in the book where all like how things in creation they're they're done in threes. They're done, they're and you see that a lot. And a lot of things are done in threes, like like us, you know, by soul spirit. But the thing with colors, then the color wheel, it has your primary, your secondary, and your tertiaries. So that's what you're seeing here. Even though even though it's technically 12 there, it's the, the primary, the secondary, and, and then the tertiary from that. So that that's where that came from, and then that's just the light rays of whatever. So that that's kind of explains where that came from. Why did Jesus say baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? I realize in Acts some were baptized in the name of Jesus only. That's another good question. That is a, a that is a big point that modalists do bring up, and I will say, it is a good point they make. I don't defend modalists. They're 
the belief is heretical, but that is a fair point they make because you see this in Matthew 28, verse 19. It tells, like you said, that the, that, that, that the baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, or, or Holy Spirit, however it says it. But then the book of Acts, you don't see that wording ever, ever again. It's always done in the name of Jesus. And so that's that, that tells you something right there because it's the same thing. If you baptize in the name of Jesus, you're baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It means the same thing. Now, where the modalists, the one that's Pentecostal, they get off kilter with it is because they say it can only be done in the name of Jesus. But they, which, and, and, they, and they neglect Matthew 28. Well, no, you can do it either way because it means the same thing. So yeah. all, all that's proving is that Jesus is the Father, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, as I've been saying in the book. So that's all that proves. Yep. Question. Just a little confused here. Revelation 4 2 says one sits on the throne. Doesn't Revelation 4 take place before God is all in all? Are there two thrones, one with his body and one with his soul? No, there's not two thrones. And I show the scriptures. Because I, I, I cover this, like your question in the book. There are not two thrones, it's just one throne. Um, just one. You see that very clearly in Revelation 4 and 5 and other places. It's just one throne. Yeah. Um, and, and the soul is sitting on it in Revelation chapter 4. And mm -hmm. Jesus Christ comes up and takes the book out of his hand. Jesus is not sitting on his own throne. Right. But like, like what you what you asked, I have a whole chapter dedicated to that. I show the cross references Old New Testament. And, and see, that's the thing. I, I have this comment, brother, you know, if you don't mind. But every question that's been asked so far, that's why I call it definitive. Because every question, question that's been asked so far, when then they're great, great questions, but covered in the book. Mm -hmm. And and people forget. I mean, we have we have been going over this for years with people. <laughs> And watching their videos and listening to their arguments, oh, yeah. and, you know, all of us. And I mean, we we've talked about that. not just myself and brother Jacob. I mean, we've had a lot of the brethren in the comment stream here. You can yeah. testify to it that we've gone back and forth on this issue and and ironed everything out. You know, yep. and big collaborative work. And Jacob is the one that took up the the call to write it down in a book form and say, okay, here is what the Bible teaches. There you go. And so that's you know. It's not some kind of a thing of we're just trying to make, you know, let's get this money thing going or whatever else, you know, or whatever else. No, no, you know, that's not it. It's about getting something out there into your hands that is a, a definitive work on all the arguments that we've seen and all the questions that we've heard over the years, you know. And I mean, we still still deal with this, you know, on a daily basis. <laughs> the Trinitarian coming out, you know. I've never heard such ridiculous nonsense. The Trinity is three persons. God in three persons. You know, I think, okay. Here we go again. What yeah. about what about that first? Yeah, well, what about this one? I know, I know where you're going. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's what the book Been is. Been there, about. done that. <laughs> okay, question. Thought of this yesterday. I'm not a Trinitarian. When it says the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, could it be saying it is the name, as in one name, one person. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. That's, that's why I just got done saying. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's that simple. Yep. You know, you know, the hard part. I, I, the hard part of the Godhead, brethren, is just believing it by faith. That's the hardest part about it. It's the same. It's, it's been well said again. Of say, take, take the book of Revelation. P you know, p people have often said, you know, it's not that it's hard to understand. It's just hard to believe. You know. It's the same thing the Godhead. It is not that hard to understand. You just got to show the scriptures, but then you have to say, okay, God, I believe in you for as you are. That's it. I like this one. Oh. Send your work to me and I will write a treatise against it. You are inherited <laughs> right now. Only those who hold the Catholic faith can be saved. <laughs> By God's name, you even you found the true final pontiff. Well, buddy, I'm not going to send you one, but if you want, if you want to write your treatise, Buy a copy of the book, and then and, and then you can send your treatise to me. Yeah. And, and you know, I've, I've offered this to any of my enemies out there. Send me a letter in the mail. Um, send it certified so you know when I get it and whatever else. And uh, write down anything you're against me on, and I will answer it. Yep. I still have yet to be to have anybody take me up on that. It's amazing. Everybody calls me an idiot and stupid and whatever else, and yet nobody will take me up on it. <laughs> Just simple. I know, you know, writing letters through the mail is a difficult thing, but, you know, whatever. And by the way, uh, this this kind of garbage right here, this Catholic papal trash right here, um, is completely violates the scriptures. You are not yep. to add to or subtract from. And that's why Catholics are going to hell, because they add to things. And, you know, Mr. Apostolic C, 
I'm sure you are part of it. Um, yeah, little Catholic with nothing else to do better on your, with your time. But, uh, if you die today, would you go to heaven? You can't answer that. You know, you can't, it'd be presumption to say yes, because you have to die in a state of grace. So, you know, don't call us heretics. Okay. Yeah. Believe in your satanic little pagan Trinity. And if you're going to keep doing that, then you're going to go to hell and burn period. So any other questions? Let or the one thing that got me when I first heard Brian say it was let us make man in our image singular. Another statement that opened my eyes. The fact God is one being person. Yeah, the similitude of God. I'm it right just, back around. Yeah. And then that's why and I, I cover this in the book too. All these these same scriptures we've talked about, a lot of them, they just the new versions get change them all the time. And you see it. And, and that's why that's why I made a point of saying, just go back to that point we said earlier about the only truth that God can be found in the Kingdom's Bible. I mean it. I've I've checked the new versions. They have destroyed so many key verses that it, it that that it's purposeful. It's not just all oh, they change. No, it was on purpose to get rid of it. And you you will see it. I show it in the book. So mm -hmm. any Trinitarians out there, any modalists out there. Now's your chance to our heretics sitting here ready for your question. Come on. I'm <laughs> out of purgatory that you could get for attacking heretics. Let's make it happen here. Come on. <laughs> get some of those venial forgiven. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, again, please put question before it. Um, I think you kind of covered that in the book, didn't you? Question: Can you explain this? Has as how water exists in three different states? Solid, liquid, gas. That's how to that's how to answer that. But it's still water, right? Yeah. Okay. So to be clear, you believe in one being, one in person, not one in being three in persons like Trinitarians. No, I I believe that that and we, well, we believe, and many other brothers and sisters here believe as well. We believe that 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 there is only one God, and His name is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the Godhead, and and He is and He is a body, soul, and a spirit. He is a a tripart being, if you will. We are created in his, we were created, Adam was created in his image and likeness. That That's similitude of God. That's what we believe. We do not believe in three different persons. We very much reject that. Mm -hmm. Yep. What are four states? Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. You can you can take things and just see again. You get into the philosophical thing and you just change it and move it over here. And well, well yes, but what about the you know, man has a body, soul, spirit according to the scriptures? You say oh, I'd reject that. I would have to see proof of you know. Okay, well then you're going to hell. You're not saved. It's we're talking as Bible believing Christians again. This is our standard right here, not this or some other satanic pagan nonsense. Um, question Will book be on Kindle? Um, I'm in the process eventually here. I'm going to be trying to get an ebook at some point. People have asked about that. Yeah, I don't know if it will specifically be on a Kindle or a Nook, but um, I definitely do intend to get an ebook at some point. Yeah, so there you go. It'll probably more than likely sold on Lulu. That's probably what it'll be. So, when if if when that happens, I will post an update, let everyone know about it. Oops, might miss the thing moved just as I was going to click. Okay, question: Who is the idol shepherd? Does he relate in any way to the Satanic Trinity? I believe God uses him to deceive the Muslims. Uh, Cover in the book um, on that thing of the whole of the whole Satanic Trinity. The idol shepherd that is in reference to the the coming Antichrist, the beast, that son of perdition. Um, 
so yeah, I do I do cover that because in read Revelation 17, brother. Um, you'll see that correlation happen where it talks about the idle shepherd where he has he has his right eye dark and his, his hand is caught or whatever, paraphrasing. In Revelation 13, where that satanic trinity is broken down, it's repeated like three times about that, but the man who has the eye darkened. So yeah, that that's the idle shepherd. Question, how do you describe creation when in Genesis 1 you see the Trinity at work? Were you watching earlier? Probably not. Genesis 1, 1, Genesis 1, 1 is the Father. Genesis 1, 2 is the Holy Ghost. And Genesis 1, 3 is the Word, the Lord Jesus. Okay. Again, I have a whole chapter in the book. I talk about the, the thing of the of, of the creation of, of the thing there. Yes, you can see that every aspect of, of the Godhead doing different things in creation. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there are, I mean, like I said, just, I covered that in the book. That's, it's just, it's, that's not a Trinity. It's right. Or Trinity is not there. Yeah. Again, or it's, 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 so, you know, you go back to it. And, that, and that's, and that's, and that's, and that's, I'm saying, this is the type of questions I'm talking about. It's just, you're just people, when you get the book, if you're a Trinitarian, I'm serious. I, we are not your enemies, but you have to come into this with just an open mind. You cannot come in with preconceived notions and say, well, this may just open your mind to it. If you don't, it won't make sense to you. It just won't. And if you add to the scriptures, you're never going to get it. And it's going to be like, you're a heretic. This No, it's because you added to the scriptures. You yeah. know? And wasn't there some kind of a new version or something that changed the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters to some kind of dove or something? Um, oh, oh, my headphones have caught my chair. Um, <laughs> this is, a, I, I quote this, I quote this in the book um, briefly, but there's a new version that actually just came out this year. It's called the LSV, the literal standard version, you know, and looks like this. This is a big giant copy of it. But in Genesis 1, 1, 2, they, they actually change it. And it says like the Holy Spirit fluttered over the waters. That's a dove. They, and it's just so funny. You read, you, you read these Trinitarians, they will tell you, that, oh, we don't believe the Holy Spirit's a dove. We don't believe it's a dove. We just, we, it's just symbolic, you know, but then you have a new version. It's, defines it as fluttering. And so many of these books that I was reading, even though their new version didn't say say it word like that, they would define it. They would they would add it in on their own and say, oh the Holy Spirit, oh the Holy Spirit was was fluttering. It was who was just flying around over the deep. When they say it's not a dove. So that's just it just proves that they do in fact believe in a, a bird for a God. Which is what the Bible openly condemns too, by the way. So yep. And, uh, you know, John chapter 1, by the way, too, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all yeah. things made by him, without yeah. him, anything made that was made. So, <clears throat> and, that, and that's exactly what we're talking about. It's tearing Jesus down. That's what I'm saying. That's why he's the blessed and only potentate who only hath immortality. He is the Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life. You either believe that or you don't. It just comes down to those basic arguments. Yep. Question, does the Trinity align with paganism or is it created as a new thing by Rome? Oh, it's, well, it, I mean, there's a little both there, but, you know, it like, we, like I cover in the book, it's it's been there for thousands, it was there thousands of years before Rome ever came to being at the power. It started in Babylon, that's where the original Trinity started from, and then it just, as, you know, it basically from the Tower of Babel when they had the, their, their Trinity, then it spread once once God confounded their language. They took all their pagan traditions, and they spread out, and they changed them based on the on the new cultures. And then eventually Rome picked it up because they also believed in, in triads, and they just took all their paganism around them that had triads, and they took Christianity, you know, and they just created a new religion, which is mm -hmm. called Roman Catholicism. <laughs> and, and I will say this. They did that, but they also did create a new trinity, the earth. Right, trinity. right, right. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. So it's not yeah. just... Son, Holy Ghost. It's also Jesus, Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Right. You can actually right. see the Catholic paintings that actually have Jesus, Mary, Joseph on the earth, Father, Son, Holy Ghost up in heaven. And it's funny because they do it in a way that's an up. It's a downward pointing triangle and an upward pointing triangle. Yeah, it's just blatant, you know, pagan blasphemy. So, all right. Uh, question, do the Jehovah's Witnesses believe in the Trinity? They ascribe to what is known as Arianism, but their Arianism is a little different. 
um, Arianism. I didn't, I didn't cover this in the book because it's just it's so irrelevant, really. But they teach that there's one God, the Father, but then and then but then the Son of God. He's a he's a he was the first thing created by by the Father, which was which was Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is a lesser God. And but but in Jehovah's Witnesses, they they teach that he that he's Michael the Archangel, and the, and, and the Holy Spirit is like some impersonal uh, life force out there. So yeah, yeah. And force be with you. <laughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing, Brian. That's terrible, I know. <laughs> Question, what do three parts mean? When I say person, I mean identities or members. I, I know you're going with this. When I say parts, I just, because the Bible defines them also as members or parts or things. The Bible says that even you, it's, I know that's so, you know, how terrible, you know, things is for, you know, you know, I mean, at one point there's in the, the Holy, the, the Bible is actually refers to the Holy Spirit as an it. You know, and, and the new versions go all irate over that. But no, when I mean by parts, I'm talking about three clearly distinct parts to man. Your body, your soul, and your spirit. You can see the body, but you cannot see the soul and the spirit. But they're clearly there and distinct. But they all work together in one person. That's that's what I mean. So I'm sorry if I have not um, clarified better. Hmm. You know it's funny because I'm seeing this in the comments. Just say briefly, someone said this in the comments about you know about George Lucas and Star Wars. It's I, w I didn't put this in the book, but I was I was going to, but I, just, I decided not to because I'm trying to keep it down. There's actually a Trinity in Star Wars. I was showing Brian. I was showing you that there's actually actual Trinity in Star Wars, and it's just it, you go into pop culture. It's everywhere. You actually look into it. It it's it's ridiculous. They they are pushing an agenda to get people to accept the Trinity. You know, just all that implicit subliminal mind stuff. You you see, it's crazy. Yep. Okay. Is there anybody else with a question or a comment or uh, an attack on us or anything? We enjoy attacks, you know, especially, you know, from the Trinitarians. I, I've grown to like it. You know, I kind of feel empty inside it. Like it. You know, what's funny. And we, we didn't say this till yet. Cause but you, you and I, Brian, we talked about this. It was so amazing. When we did that, that initial thing against James White, mm -hmm. Bible talks about how, you know, it talks about, you know, you know, it says in different places how their mouths may be stopped. And it's been how many months now? We did that back in February. So it's been what, what five, six months now, roughly. Yeah. Not a soul has said a word. Nobody said a word. Nobody. I mean, James White, any of the of, of, of the regulars that attack us or whatever, no one said a word. And I, and I just and I, I just I just give a glory to God for that because, and like mm -hmm. I said, if you read this book and when and like I said, I'm sending I will be sending this book to James White. So if you're one of James White followers, you can let him know in advance. He'll be getting a copy soon. Same with Anderson, same with Stephen Anderson, all these other guys. I'm, I'm going to send them a copy, and they can. I, and I know they're going to lie about me. I and, and the book and, and the Lord. I know that. That what that's the, that's just the name of the game, quote unquote. But you know what? You know their mouths will be stopped. They will have no real answer to this because it is from the scriptures and the scriptures alone. They can, can say, "Oh, he's King News only, whatever." That's going to be their only argument. When it comes right down to it, it's just going to be he's going against orthodoxy. He's a heretic. He's one of these kings and all the guys. That's all they're going to be able to say, and they're just going to look for any little thing they can nitpick me on. That's it. That's all they're going to have, and 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 I mean that. I because it's, it's all there. Yeah. I'll just answer this one because it kind of relates. What is paganism? Anything outside of worshiping Jesus Christ. Yep. All other religions are false, except for Jesus. Um, okay. Um. I'm seeing someone ask me if I believe in tongues. Um, well, if you, well, I do, but if we're talking about Pentecostal tongues, no, <laughs> but yeah. tongues are just languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, uh, there are known languages. I'll say that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't really see any other questions. Uh, are Jews Trinitarian nowadays since uniting with Rome? Well, I mean, some. But... No, he, he well, he's, I, I think he's asking, are just are the Jews Trinitarian now? Well, I mean, no, no. I mean, they're very, 
my, many of them are still radically against the Trinity, but there are you know a handful that have converted over that they believe in the Trinity. I mean, I mean, I've seen Jews that that, are, that actually teach open like replacement theology. You know, you know, figure that out. You know, but you know, but that's just such a small number. Okay, um, not really seeing any other questions there, so I guess we'll put in, uh, end the live stream here. Um, but like I said, if you know you want to go to lulu.com and just type in the Lord of Glory. Just type that in. You either either type that in the Lord of Glory or search my name, Jacob M. Thompson. Either one will get you the same result. Yeah. And, and like I said, I, I will be making more updates on this in the future. I do plan to come out with a hardback at some point. I'll make updates on that. When an ebook can, comes around, I'm making updates on that. And anything else that I plan to come out with, I will be making updates. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be trying very hard to get this book out there to the to you know to the to the world out there. I mean, this is it's no. I'll say this very quickly, brother. It's no secret that brethren, things are coming to an end. This dispensation is coming to a, a, a grinding halt pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Don't know when that is specifically, but we can all see the signs. I mean, you, and, and just even, even just, even prior to that, let's just, you know, the collapse of America is imminent, and this whole presidential reality show it ain't gonna change a darn thing. Okay, it's it's set in stone. It's done. These people are not repenting. I mean, that's why, you know, this 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 nation trusts in oppression. I and you said in Isaiah thirty, same thing as Israel. They trust in oppression. Mm -hmm. You know, they love lies. They've made lives and, and and death their refuge. You know, refuge. And you see what they're this whole, all this basically martial, all stuff you see happen right here in America, around the world. It's basically limiting this, the, all the, the fun and the sins and the, of the, of the people, you know, that's what that's, they're being impressed by. But in that time, are you seeing anyone repenting? Nope. What you're hearing right now. And still, these still lying prophets are still preaching peace. There's peace and there's everything. What's it say? Peace and safety. And then come with some instruction, you know, but they keep saying over and over again, and, oh, things aren't bad. And I, these still prophets, they're still preaching. Oh, there's a great move of God in this country. They're still saying it. You know, it's insane. This nation is wicked. And the point I'm trying to make all this is because, and I do firmly believe that this is, there's just a lot of, that's, I think it's why the Lord brought it out now. And he very graciously used me as the vessel to do it with everyone else's help. It wasn't just me, but used me to actually bring it out. And um, I think this is definitely um, a truth that needs to be get out there. And, I, and I'm just praying this book gets to those that need it the most. That's, that's what I'm praying for above all else. And mm -hmm. that's all I can ask for. And the, the Lord will provide as he always has. I'm not, I'm not worried about that whatsoever. I just want to get the word of God out there and I just want to do it faithfully. And so, I do want to say thank you to Evan out there that's been helping me with I really am thankful for that. So I just want to say that. We'll end with this kind of a question here. So saw this one. It's a good question. Can you use the verses to disprove the Trinity to witness to Jews? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, that yeah. is very important because they're going to have to realize who Jesus Christ is. And you cannot witness to a Jew with the Trinity. Period. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say if nothing else, this is the book. If you want to give it to a Jew, give this to them. It's deep, but they will they will be able to relate to it because there's a lot of Old Testament stuff I, I get into. So yeah. they will be able to go, oh, you know. Yeah. The Trinity is, is a satanic stumbling block to to deceive the Jews is what it is. Yep. That's why every that's why every Jew, because I've seen the debates, they immediately stay, they immediately start pointing out all these things like where does it say this? Where does it say this? The the Old Testament never teaches that. And it doesn't, you know, and 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 all, and all these Trinitarians are like, no, no, you just don't get it. You haven't had the full revelation yet, you know. And their Jews are like, no, we know who our God is. Now they're they're worshiping him wrong. They're lost, unfortunately, but they of all people know are going to know who, who who their God is. You know, whether they accept him or not is irrelevant, but they know who he is. And so this Trinity stuff is is garbage. I mean, yeah, the Jews are lost, but they ain't stupid either. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. Well, saw a lot of people saying that you already ordered the book, so thank you for thank that. Thank you. Praise um, the Lord. Thank you. Great. And, um, and you know, let's just see what the Lord has for us all to do with the time that we have left, however long that is. And um, like I said, you know, you can you can study the thing out. The Lord will show you the scriptures and whatever else. Again, it's it's you can do the, the study, you know, without even getting Brother Jacob's book. But. Brother Jacob put it all together and it's going to make it a lot easier for you to get the scriptures and say, okay, this, okay, good. Mark them down in your Bible and be ready to answer people. Um, 
So thank you to everybody out there for tuning in today. Thank you for your questions. Um, and uh, we serve God. We don't serve one of three gods or Jesus Christ, a lesser God, or, well, he was a created God. Or, no, he's God Almighty. Our Savior, our God, died on the cross, paid for our sins, and he's coming back. And um, and the satanic trinity is coming in the future. And, uh, you know, if, if you're out there and I've done this in my in the past where I was trying to I believe the Godhead from the scriptures, but I was trying to blend it with Trinity language and things and trying to kind of compromise to fit in with people. You can't do that. You cannot do it. You have to drop the name Trinity. It's not in the Bible for a reason. God didn't yep. mistakenly. Oh, nuts. I forgot to put it in there. Trinity is a satanic, false set of gods. You have to drop it. You can't say God in three persons or whatever else. Drop it. Okay. So do you have anything else to say in closing? I think you pretty much covered it, brother. All right. Uh, we'll see everybody in upcoming videos. And uh, thank you again to all those who have added to this conversation down through the years. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. So we'll see everybody in the future. Thanks for watching.